you know what? I'm going to do what I do, babe. Oh! Yeah. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? My that? favorite day. <laughs> Who that? Who that? That was funny as fuck. Funny. Who that? One. Check oh. it out. Who the fuck is this? Paging me at 546 in the morning. Crack a dawning. Now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold out my eyes. See who's this paging me and why. It's my nigga Pop from the barbershop. Told me he was in the gambling spot. Heard the intricate plot. The niggas want to stick you like fly paper neighbor. Slow down, love. Two chill, drop the paper. Remember them kids up the hill, up in Brownsville, that you roll dice with, smoke slunks and run fights with? You got the Chuck yeah, my nigga version? Yeah, my nigga Pop. You fuck up blunt. God, I didn't okay, save them. Man. They scooped me to some niggas Go that you knew oh, back got, when, when you was carking minor figures. Uh, now they heard you blowing up like nitro, uh, and they want to stick the knife through your windpipe slow. Bro, go! I could do it. I could do it. I just Don't saw Notorious. I saw the movie. They heard about the Rolex and the Lexus. No, no. Stop. 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 You don't sing over the hook. Stop. This is oh. the hook. Oh, okay, my fault. I got it. After the hook, I just saw the movie. Then drop 16. Drop 16. Oh. The, 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 the Rolex and the Lexus with the Texas. Le I'm sorry, I went too fast. <laughs> now, look, I like the girl that played Little Kim. The girl that played Little Kim was incredible. Cut it. Oh, my God. Cut it. Uh, I like to say, I'm oh, sorry, Notorious, for uh, he and Biggie Smalls right now. and... And I'm sorry if it will lose dick just did to your song. Sorry about Man. that. I apologize. You just oh. now seen Notorious? I just, I met the girl that played Little Kim. Oh, my God. You just not seeing her nipples and everything. Oh my God, that <laughs> girl is beautiful. Poet is fucked up the wee part. Yeah, she <laughs> said. <laughs> she said, "Put the bunt, bunts in the bunts." <laughs> How do you fuck up blunts? <laughs> that's your cue. She that's said, "Remember from, them that's kids." From smoking blunts. Oh, okay. Poet said, "Remember them kids." Yeah, oh, I didn't. I didn't read. You got the Chuck E. Cheese version of this song. <laughs> Remember I, them little kids. Up that's R. That's R. Kelly's version. We're gonna do a quick roll call. Welcome everybody to the to the foxhole. We here the foxhole doing our thing. Shout out to my man with the great shirt on right there. We talk about that later. Over here we got Taco my man Sean. Ten Grand. He's matching with the uh. What, what kind of hat is that? What is that? It's, it's, it looks like one of his kids' hats. It's embroidery. The yeah. brown beehive that this nigga's wearing. I don't know. <laughs> 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 what up, boy? What's up? It's your boy Speedy in the house. Just want to say what's happening. Oh, oh God. my God! And Just also, too, I heard around. Precious needs a date for the Oscars. You really want to go out with Precious? I want to go to the Oscars. You all gonna need four <laughs> seats. <laughs> you are gonna have an Oscar, uh, uh, Oscar Mayo. Y'all both fat, fat motherfuckers. But eat. if somebody knows uh, Precious, let them know. I'll take it. Well, Kentucky Fried Chicken knows her. <laughs> El Polo Loco knows oh, that's her. Cold, man. That's cold. Oh, you man. are wrong. Well, guys. you know what? Now the Oscars are gonna know her because I think and Kevin Smith win. know her. We're gonna talk about that later. Hilarious. Uh, over here we got the the beautiful. I love your jacket. Thank you. I love how you got your hair pent up. I don't know what the sunglasses is all about, but we talk about that later. <laughs> it's raining. Who we got right here? OG poetess. Smoke weed, weed every day. <laughs> That's, that was a good job, Louis Dix. By the time you got a joke in. Well, thank you for that. That wasn't a joke. joke. You was really coughing. <laughs> oh, they just, they just press uh, rewind from 87 when you was hot. <laughs> oh. He was hot in 87. No, he was hot in 87. Not 87. Yeah. It was 92. No, I saw no. you on a, I saw you on this uh, this uh, black Why We Laugh. And yes. they showed a clip of you. Yes. What was funny was it was the same outfit you had on in Miami uh, <laughs> for the Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> I was like, damn, how did they get Lewis already? I don't know if they just shot that <laughs> or you just wore that. I don't know what was going on. No. Over here, we got the most uh, celibate man in the history of celibacy. This young man is taking a sexual sabbatical, uh, 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 a sexual hiatus. I don't know how you categorize a nigga... Uh, this nigga have beat his meat so much he got arrested for black on black crime last week. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for my man, Ten Grand. Lou Dix. That's Fist Dix. Fist Dix hey, in your mouth. Hey, Fist hey, Dix in your mouth. Wait, talking. Lewis, you mean to tell me as romantic as you've been with what the Kiwi, y'all ain't. No, we have, we've had visual sex. What? What? They what? look at each other through telescopes. Wait, what is it? <laughs> oh, I see you. Well, I, I see mean, you. visual. Well, we, 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 we kiss, we hug, and then, you know, we. You just, watch each other masturbate? Well, I don't want to go all but say all that, but we, we have what we do. Well, is she can't we, see you because your thumb be in the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are, we are working. It is going to grow. <laughs> we are working towards an intimate relationship. It's not right a mighty now. dog. It's, it's just a very strong friendship. And, and I really like her, and she really likes me. It's not a mighty dog. 
and she's nice, and, and we just have. Um, I just want to take my time. You know. Well, you guys have been dating what eight months now? Nine months. Nine. Going months. on ten months. Yes. So you about to have a baby? She can have. A- <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say that. That's for girls who date you, Speedy. But uh, <laughs> that was a good one, Speedy. <laughs> Speedy. Anyway, you are supposed to come with your famous line, "Ain't that a bitch?" <laughs> she couldn't get it out because it was true. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I just uh, she comes uh, to the conga room on Mondays. Every other Monday, we you just get gonna the, keep going. You know. Well, I. I, no, I, I think that the timing is right. We have to take our time because no, she has... How much right. time does it take? To hit. To hit. Well, we probably won't Okay, let's try this. John, girl came over y'all the other night. When did you hit? Uh, as soon as I unraveled the roll. <laughs> In the house, my boy. It was boy. a ding-dong, then the ding a ling came out at the same time. <laughs> In the house, uh, one of the funniest writers in Hollywood. Oh, he's not here. Shit. Uh, <laughs> this brother's on fire. Are oh, you going to shit on James Hanna like that? <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together for Johnny Mac in the house, what y'all. Up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Speedy is a step. Let me give a shout out right quick. Uh oh. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me. Two things happened to me this week, and one I called the cops on. I felt bad about that. <laughs> some some dude touched you. Just, just, I, I was driving. Down, I was in, in Ventura in Sherman, on Sherman Oaks, and Going this to get lady your hair done. was driving down a one way street the wrong way. She almost hit me, so I was like, I, I I avoided her, right? But then she just kept going, and she was weaving and bobbing and weaving out the traffic. And you told. I called nine one one. As you should. And I said, there's a lady down here on Ventura and, and Fulton, and she's driving down the street the wrong way. She's, almost, she's about to kill 14, 15 people. And I said, what street are you on? So we're on Fulton. And what is your name, sir? Click. <laughs> uh, we don't don't, need that. I know what entrapment that's is, bitch. That's not snitching. <laughs> no, that's, that's right. not. You did the right thing, Mac. You did the right thing. And the second thing, I'm going to get this out before we go take a quick break. I was at the comedy store. Comedy store. And mm-hmm. I seen this motherfucking comic from St. Louis oh. do two of Speedy Jokes. And one Robin Harris joke. I mean, Bernie Mac joke. So he did the speedy joke. And I, at this time, I'd already had an alcoholic beverage or two. And I shouted out. Crown That's the speedy joke, nigga. I shouted that out in the comedy store. And the people at the comedy store looked at me like, oh, we just took a bite out of crime. Uh, we'll be right back. 877-2106-106 is the number to call in, y'all. We got some great things for you. Fox Soul Radio. We're back, we're back. Fox Soul doing his thing. Doing his thing. Yeah. yeah, the Fox Soul. I love this song. Oh, I, song I love I love this Snoop right here. This is Snoop is good. This is Snoop is good. Snoop is still good. He ain't the same Snoop no more. He gonna whoop your ass. He has a good album now, right? I know, but it ain't. You gonna get your ass whooped. Why? I ain't like I called him gay. <laughs> we got out the Ricky Smiley. We'll get into that later. Hey, right now we'll go to Louis Dix. He got a little something you want to say about Ashley Madison. Yeah, well, according to a recent study, 74% of men said they would have an extramarital affair if they could get caught. Are you one of them, Speedy? If what? Uh, extra extramarital. What? I, I messed that word up. <laughs> I thought you would understand it, Johnny Madison. You sound like Mr. Ed. <laughs> extramarital <laughs> affair if they could get caught. If they, they could wouldn't. get caught. Are you one of them, Speedy? Would you have an affair? If you could yeah, get I would. Yeah, I would. I see that. Johnny Mac, would you? Is your wife still on that? Okay, cool. Because <laughs> your wife, your ex-wife is fine. I'm just saying. Yes, she, Which, she was gorgeous. All right, thank you. That's enough of that. I tried Would, to hit. <laughs> you're messing me up. I'm trying to read. Would I'm you sure. have sexual relations outside of your marriage if you could keep it a I'm secret? A- now you can, just like my ex did. At <laughs> AshleyMadison.com, AshleyMadison.com is a dating service specifically for married men and women looking to have a secret affair. So if you want to have the kind of life I have, <laughs> that is why Ashley Madison is the best place to have an affair. Because you'll meet married women who have just as much reason to keep your affair a secret as you do. That's right. Your husband will be sitting at home just like me, cooking for the kids and everything. Circle jerk. Oh, well, hey, mommy will be home soon as she's done. <clears throat> well, with over, five so million, hey, with over 5 million members, can you believe Ashley Madison is the fastest growing data service in my house? That's right. I'm just kidding. In America. It's, uh, <laughs> hey, they say it's 100% secure. <laughs> okay. They say. <laughs> they say. Trust me, in my house, I found out. <laughs> it's completely anonymous. Yeah, until he calls. <laughs> All right. And it's free to join. Not during the divorce. It gets a lot of money. So listen, if you're looking for sex that you're not getting at home, because it's leaving the house as you try to get it. When you go upstairs, she's going downstairs. Hey, so listen, don't sleep with a single woman who you could potentially have a great life with and have kids. No, she might exploit you. Can you say Tiger Woods? So instead, you date a married woman who has just as much reason to keep it a secret as you do. That's right. So try it today. Try what? 
Oh, you can try it absolutely free, Speedy. Yes. AshleyMadison.com, the only place you can be sure to have a discreet affair. Ain't that Lewis nothing. Dick, that was fucking hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> so you we be totally sitting won't. home like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said circle jerky. <laughs> Nigga, that's the Bud Light joke of the day right there. And speaking of Bud Light, we got to give them a shout out. If you're looking for a good time, Bud Light, bring Bud Light to the party. Bud Light's unique ability to elevate good times like we're having now yeah. is what makes it the perfect beer, beer for bringing people together. Bud Light is the best-selling American-style light lager because it's superior drinkability. <laughs> it's just right. I need a it's beer. It's fun, social, and the perfect beer to enjoy friends with. When you want to have a good time. <laughs> Bud Light's drinkability is what sets Bud Light apart from other light beers. Next time you get together with friends, make sure you bring Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Thank you. I think that's what the Canadian girls had with after they won. <laughs> <laughs> <Bud Lights. laughs> them bitches were selling paper. With some blunts. <laughs> blunt Bud blunt. Light. I, you know what's crazy? I actually drink Bud Light all the time. I got uh, My favorite the Bud Light lime. You're yeah. actually And it's actually great for, 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 for burping, too, because I have like a little... A uh, heart condition every once in a while. I, don't, I got gas real bad in my heart. <laughs> you I starting can, I, to look like a lime, nigga. You nigga, turning I, yellow I'm, as fuck. <laughs> that's because of the bad weather, speed. I, I need a tan at all times. <laughs> but the, you, the you think, a, you think tree, a, a, a Bud Light lime real fast? <laughs> don't try to ease that shit. <laughs> what she me. say? What she say? I said <laughs> limes are green, not yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speed. Oh my god. Hey, nigga. It was the joke, and you laughed. Limes when are I, green. But when I said the joke, you laughed, didn't you? Oh my! I, I was stay still focused. I was laughing. All right, yeah, that's don't called, that's called friendship. Yeah, yeah. Don't let poetess throw you off. But, but Louis, that was the best read I ever heard in my goddamn life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, trust me, it came from the heart. <laughs> and we should go on there. Is your wife on there, Louis? She's you, single now, so she can't. You, you know, oh, she can't be on. Cause no, single, single people can go on. Cause there. single people go on there. Yeah, I'm going on there tomorrow. Single people. Go yeah, you can meet people as a single person. Cause they, cause they gonna want to fuck that night, John. That's you know that they gonna want to fuck soon as they meet you. They know you getting at them because. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Steve. and then her husband's sitting at home watching the kids, wondering where she is. I'll she, call and tell him where she is. she comes in the house. Well, that's great for me as a babysitter. No, it's part of the house. But she comes in the you house. You know how hard it is to get some of the kids around? Right? <laughs> then she runs to the, the kids bathroom. kids goddamn cough syrup now. She gargles, brushes her teeth three or four times, jumps in the shower, and then comes downstairs. I'm ready. Where's dinner? Sounds perfect. No, that so. was my home. That's not perfect, Johnny Mac. <laughs> it worked for her. Yeah, sure did. What happened was you were not willing to p participate in the motherfucking plan she had. The peas well, is a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, the peas. Yeah. The peas is a motherfucker. It's all your fault. We're going to do a special shout-out because I heard we got shouted out oh, the, we got by mad, the greatest woman in the world. Got mad love yesterday on the Oprah Winfrey show. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know that Jamie was on there to surprise Kirstie Alley, who says that Jamie right. Foxx is her dream booty call. So oh. Oprah surprised Kirstie. And in the conversation, we got a big shout out from for the foxhole. Because you watch Oprah. Oh yeah, I watch Oprah. And you also uh, subscribe to the old magazine. <laughs> you know and what? You, and you're in and the book club too, right, Louis? <laughs> <laughs> and he's on, and, you and, just and you he's just all feminine it out right now. He watched the We Channel. We got the Oxygen <laughs> Channel. All them. He don't even got ESPN no more. Uh, yeah, just do you watch Snapped? Yes, I do. <laughs> I think that is one good show. <laughs> and y'all need to call in eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six. I don't watch the Judge Mabel. So what did what did uh what did uh Oprah say? Well, well, Fox came on and it was you know Fox is just such a star you know he's Damn, just like he sound good. He sound like he bought a mouth. No, pissing. I ain't no no no. This is the boss. No, when somebody got talent, jerk, they got man. talent. It's just I mean, be honest. All right, if I had that kind of talent, I would not Fox. be here. All right. All right, let's just be honest. That's you why said, you won't be here next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah Speedy, That's don't say right. that out loud like I'm you did in the hallway. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm still show right. up, man. Speedy's Comedy Corner. All right. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you got that same lady that uh, did the security for the White House, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that big didn't ask for nothing. That shit wasn't even laminated. She let the Mexican niggas in. So what happened on so, Oprah? Uh, Fox, uh, so Oprah, was. she said she was Fox's great friend, and they were good friends. And so she surprised Kirstie Alley. And Fox was back there, and the woman went crazy. She went over there and kissed the no, tele. No, about the shout out. Oh, the shout out was yeah. she. Uh, oh my Fox God. Was, Shit. Well, excuse me. She was saying. Oprah That's said, true. "I was on your." Sh yeah, boy. And then I called a few people who were not on it. And okay. Thank you for bringing the show down, Louis. Okay, next story item. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the number to call into. Okay. Let's talk about at Sea World. <laughs> 
Am I wrong? For, am yeah, I wrong? How for, subtle was you? I, I, can I talk about that? I'm how saying. subtle was that? He didn't even say that. Y'all I, just start cracking I, up. Y'all is because I, I got I got an issue with the whole situation. <laughs> well, what's your issue, Donnie Mac? The yeah. lady at SeaWorld. What was the young lady name? I'm sorry don't for her her, tragedy. Her rest in peace. Yeah. Well, yeah, rest in peace. We're just gonna say we'll the young lady. We'll just say her name is Dawn. Her name is Dawn. Yeah. Well, her name is Dawn. I'm sorry for the tragedy. Condolences out to her family. But here's my issue. You at SeaWorld, you feeling this? Feeding this killer whale. Well, okay. Chuck, you know, Emphasis on killer. His first name is Killer. Last name. Whale. This what happened. His first name ain't Tickle Whale. His it's, first name ain't Petting Whale. whale. His it's, name is Killer. killer. So I guess she had the little motherfucking uh, goldfish. I don't know what she was feeding. Well, she no, actually her ponytail. Well, this is what's reported. But she fe- she feeds the whale, right? And does tricks with them and all that. There it is, right there. John, this is what happened. You know, whales don't have no long attention span. Right. Whale looked over and said, ooh, seal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Shout out the feeding time. <laughs> so That's not funny. The, 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 this the, the, the tragic part that the young lady was killed and whatever, but she's That's training funny. this motherfucker. His name is Killer no, Whale. Feeding. Yeah, she's feeding him. She a feeder. Yeah, literally. So she, she, <laughs> so she wants to spill some of this shit on her. <laughs> Y'all That's niggas are off That's the right. chain. The whale was like, who ordered the bagel? I don't know. So... So my, my issue with the thing was now they want to put the whale to sleep. In other words, kill the whale. They want to kill the killer whale. You want to kill the killer whale. My name is Killer Whale. whale. Ah. What do you think I'm going to do? Kill. Well, I heard some um, on the news last night. Um, one of the people on this. This is you heard on the news last night. <laughs> one of the people ah, <laughs> you are wrong <laughs> one of the 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 people on the news were talking about putting a whale in a tank like that is put like a human being in a bathtub yeah, that's they, what i'm saying if, say, if the ocean so is your home that's like putting pressures in a in a goddamn phone oh, booth you guys are <laughs> That's fucked up. Oh, that's that's like putting pressures in willie walker in a chocolate factory and say don't eat the goddamn chocolate what do you think she's gonna do yeah they say they get neurotic <laughs> in captivity what? They, no. Why they, would you? They they do the the whales. Why would man. you know about why the whales? Then did? this one has been isolated <laughs> away you, from. Right. It's, been, have, it's like putting like. In, look, putting Lewis in a whole bunch of room full of pussies. <laughs> 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 it's like being in isolation in prison. You're de No, it's not because my my, as my and, and you're right. You're right. His name is Killer Whale. Whales are not supposed to be jumping through motherfucking hoops and, 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 and jumping splashing up and grabbing people. a fucking goldfish out of your hand, splashing people. You got, like you said, you got him in a little bitty ass cage, basically in his little cage, and he can't swim outside. Fish this tank. motherfucker is tired. Now, he done showed you twice before. Yeah, he got two problems. Yeah, because he, he got two It's a motherfucking serial killer in the motherfucking tank. Yeah, a Dexter the whale. Yeah. So, and my thing is, why do you want to kill the motherfucking well, Cause somebody got to pay. She already paid the price. She already paid. She, no, she was the menu. Well, actually, you know what? actually, her family, her family doesn't want anything to happen to the She well was an appetizer because she got the job 15 years ago, and her family, was, she, they were, her entire family was so happy because that's what she wanted to do her whole life. Are they happy now? Well, I mean, I'm sure they're they sad. Pro- they probably feel that she wouldn't want the whale killed. That's what they said. They said you that. Know? I don't want. What's the whale name? Kill John. I'm gonna tell I you don't now. want it's kill. The whale is named Telecom. Who? That's strike two right there. Tillicum. My name is Killer Whale, and you gonna name me Tillicum. <laughs> what kind of bullshit? Why you give me a gay ass name? I'm gonna let you know, John. Now, I'm John. a fucking serial killer. If a pigeon ate you, I'm gonna shoot that pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna look out for you. I'm not gonna let that pigeon live. I'm <laughs> gonna kill that pigeon. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six is the that's thing. hysterical. Well, you were right. The well has killed before. It killed in 1991 and 1999. What? He ain't to be fucked with. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's, he's, a, he's a ten year killer. Yeah, this motherfucker got <laughs> every ten years he so, get cracked. This nigga hey, do what he gotta hey, do. Hey, 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 he's been trying to get out of this system. They just won't let him go. That's what I'm saying. You can let the motherfucker. And now you can't even let him in the ocean because he probably wouldn't survive because he's been domesticated. Uh, he will survive. <laughs> he showed you that he will kill. This motherfucker not. It's gonna take him ten years. Yeah, you, you feed this nigga a sandwich. Nigga, I'm gonna kill a whale. We got a phone call already. My man, ten grand. I ain't heard from him in a minute. All the way from Alabama. Low life. Low Lizzy. What up, Low Lizzy? What's up, man? What's going on, pimping? Feel it, homie. And I'm gonna go a little bit further. The whale is used to eating like 50 fish. Now he got this white bitch making him do the cha-cha slide to, to goddamn get one little ass fish. You know what I'm saying? And then the whole father's going to say the cha-cha slide. He's 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 going to say the cha-cha slide. He's
this bitch. I got this Y'all hole. Y'all are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Bro. All right, low life. I got to give you that one. That, that was, was funny. Fucking That's hilarious. wrong. Y'all are wrong. But yeah. but but thank, thank. I'm sorry to cut you off, low life. You can call any time. But I, I agree with low life. I'm not agreeing with the death. I'm not agreeing with the death. I'm not agreeing with the death. But what I'm agreeing with, my man is a killer whale. You got to leave the the Your the man. whale. And it's natural habitat. That's that's what he does. Like it's like you trying to fucking have make a pit bull a fucking house pet. That's not like you trying to tame lions. You, yeah, you think Cisco? Her, what's that nigga name of Cisco Six, 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 six <laughs> feet Roy, and then the goddamn tiger attack you, and you want to put this nigga to sleep. How about this? All the animals out there that's listening right now, don't do another goddamn trick, trick. again for the <laughs> fucking peanuts and a fucking smelt. Don't you do no more goddamn what, trick. John? A smell. That's a little small fish. You think that you think their family's gonna eat fish anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they gonna be missing on Fish Friday. <laughs> hey, we're gonna take another break and come right back. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. Please call in to 877-206-106. Listen to the man version. 877-206-106. This nigga with the smooth uh lick of his throat. You know, we're gonna take a quick break and come right back. I have the killer whale. Oh, yeah. baby! Yeah. Eight seven seven two one zero six one zero six eight seven. Welcome back. Ah, we gonna take, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna pick up, we gonna leave the whale story <laughs> while we full. We gonna, uh, we gonna swim uh, away from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna, yeah, we don't want to kill that uh, topic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we done diving into that. <laughs> yeah, We're, yeah. What about my man said he's doing the cha cha slide? <laughs> What was that? that was hilarious. Well, we gonna go to to the poetess because she's the only one here that has oh, a great education that can read off stuff. Wait, wait. I wouldn't say that. Oh, no, she's not. Yeah. Um, we have a special guest in the house. We have Thank Assembly you. Speaker Karen Bass in the house yes, with us, yes, yes. who's currently um, yes. just made the announcement that she will be yes. running for Congress. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! It's good to Pension be back. Good to be back. Good to be back. I have a question, Miss Bass. Yeah. Already? She just, just got here. Just girl. jump right off. What are the qualifications? To run for Congresswoman, what is the qualification? To well, run you for know, Congress? there's not a whole lot of qualifications. I, I mean, you have to be a U.S. Tell that by the New York governor. Patterson. I know. Oh, he ain't got to see. He ain't got to see straight to win that election. <laughs> but I'm sorry, you don't need to drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About, yeah, it's true. You have to be um, a U.S. citizen, and I think you have to be like 21 or something like That's that. That's it. That's now, it. Now you can ask me my what I think the qualifications should be. Okay. That might be what the qualifications okay, are Ms. on paper. Bass, uh, thank you for throwing it to me. Well. Uh, Miss Bass, what are your <laughs> qualifications? No, 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 no. I mean, I'll tell you mine in a second, but I think the qualifications need to be somebody that is committed to working on behalf of the community and is running because they have a set of values that they uh, values and principles that they're fighting for. Mm. Well, I have a problem with that because I, I don't really know too many Congress people, Congresswomen or Congressmen. So you say they m must be willing to work in the community. I never see any Congress people. And I live in Sherman Oaks, which is mostly, you know, White folks, uh, I don't see too many. <laughs> I don't see too many Congress women and congressmen working in our community. So how can they speak for the people and work for the people if they never even get a chance to see and talk to the people? Well, you know, <laughs> when when I was first elected, actually before I was even sworn in, I tried to create a grassroots base. You know, so I started what was called the People's Council. And uh, if I am fortunate enough to go to D.C., I want to continue that. I'd expand it because the district is larger. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Congress folks, I mean, they do live most of the time in Washington, D.C., and they commute here. So you might miss them, but they do come home and go to events and all of that. I've never seen you at a Clipper game in my life. <laughs> probably doing things behind the scenes as well. Exactly. And all those media legislation and all that. I and wanted to ask you... Um, when you, well, oh. you're still in the assembly for a couple of I am. I'm going to be speaker for 72 more hours, and then after that, I pass the baton. Okay, so your primary focus at, um, as assembly speaker was uh, foster care reform. No. no? I, wish, I wish it was my primary focus. No, when I became speaker and then I was in charge of everything, my primary focus had to be preventing California from falling off a cliff. Wow. Because of uh, the budget crisis. Okay, so what platform will you still be running on the same funny. platform? I will, and you know, my personal legislative agenda is foster care, but it's also criminal justice reform. But wearing the hat of speaker, I had to represent the entire state, and my number one issue because of the crisis had to be the budget. Louis Dix has a question. Um, <laughs> I, well, no, Ms. Karen Best. I wanted to say, uh, first of all, I'm so happy that you're going to um, be taking over uh, Diane Watson's seat. Thank you. Because I think you bring a lot to the table.
But one of the things, because I mean, there's a lot of kids sitting in schools right now who are thinking, want to get into politics because they think, well, I have to go to college, I have to do this. So they can start their groundwork helping the community when they're teenagers. They the can start their groundwork tomorrow with me at 10 o'clock at 4350 <laughs> Wilshire Boulevard. There you go. The John Wilshire Brown. United Methodist Church because we're going to kick off this campaign and teenagers are very welcome. I first got involved when I was 14 and I've been involved ever since. Wow. But it's such a self, self-serving thing with young people now. How do we get them to get out of themselves? I have two teenagers. And you I, do? I, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we, no. yeah. I've been there. Don't worry about that. They don't like We take them down to help feed the homeless and stuff like that, but it just seems like they're rebelling from giving you know, you know. well you know what um, life is easy. you know the organization that I started uh, community coalition one of the first things we did was we formed a youth component called South Central Youth Empowered Through Action and we started recruiting kids at middle school and at high school that was 20 years ago Right. You know some of those kids are still there, except for now they're in their 30s. I'm about to say they're still in high school. <laughs> the kids are still in high school. That was, now, that was a good program. Now, for people like like myself and Johnny Mac, who you have, know we want have criminal, criminal records. records. Yeah. Hey. So, Speaker of the House does exact. What is your exact job being Speaker of the House? Well, Speaker of the House, the, the first thing that you're in charge of is 80 members of the assembly. And you're essentially in charge of everything from where they park to their offices to the committees they sit on. You're responsible for all the legislation that goes through the House. Uh, you run half of the building. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years. Wow. I, I have a question. Now, this, yeah. It in may post. not be in your expertise, but it is part of California. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were talking about this right before you came in. I live in Sherman Oaks. And I come over here, and I come here over Coldwater Canyon. Right. It is the raggediest street <laughs> in the history of streets. I feel like I'm on a railroad or something. So, and, and, and most of them, like, and, and I don't know whoever lived in the valley, it's all kind yeah. of potholes. And, and I, I was coming over here, and I see certain part of the street was paved, and then they just stopped. And I got to go over potholes, run over midgets. I mean, every kind of thing to get here. <laughs> and, well. and, and, they, and they say, and they say <laughs> money. You know, I had to pay like almost three hundred dollars to register my car. It's supposed to be for the, you know, the, the California streets, or whatever. Who do we need to speak to to get some nice, clean, safe? Or to get that street done? To, to, to get streets, the whole valley, everything in in, now, the, see, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the valley is just raggedy. Now see if they do, have I have to, to buy a fucking it, Wells it, Fargo <laughs> stagecoach. I'm sorry for cussing. You want to answer? That's that, that that's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. I, I was one of your students at South Central. <laughs> But I, I dropped out of homeschool. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me for that curse word right there. No, well, you know so what? So what do I do to get I, my well, streets clean? Let me, let me just tell you, if you're having problems over there in Sherman Oaks, I mean, folks got some money over there in Sherman Oaks, so you can imagine what it is <laughs> south of the town. That's what I'm saying. Well, if it's your streets, it's your city council. If it's your freeways, it's the state. And oh. so, you know, the mayor has this program where he's been filling all the potholes. But, you know, because of the rains and all... Um, you know, it's been a lot more difficult. But streets uh, and roads. So you can are call in. You can call your city council city person. Council. I just wanted so, to know that. That's, that's what's going on in my mind. Yeah, I'm sure. no. But he actually no, has no. a bike. Yeah. So. Oh, he does. I see. So, motorcycle? Oh, bike, no. No. <laughs> ten speed. I let Jesus use my motorcycle. Hey, what, I ride what, a ten speed, too. See? What do you think of all the scrutiny <laughs> that our president has been under lately, especially think, by certain I think black a, leaders? Uh, well, I think a whole lot of white folks woke up three months into his term and said, oop, who did we put in the White House? Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? And then they started the Tea Party movement, you know? And the thing that's interesting to me about the Tea Party movement is, is that they wear the clothes of their ancestors. You know, they, they dress like in colonial clothes. Yes. So what will we wear? Shackles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and three and this, this is back. for real? Or are you, you, no, no, this no, is, no, this they really do. Going? Oh, they really? do when you go to the Have Tea Parties. Yeah. But... I, I, um, yeah, they wear it, but they, they have that right. Those? Have you been? No, but I, I just think that, um, you know, we, I, I watch O'Reilly a lot, and they, you know, they come back and forth. And I think these people have a voice. I think they're, they're directing it the wrong way. I think they need to direct it back. And the voice, what, what, are they, what actually are they saying? I well, haven't, well, haven't seen it yet. They're saying that, you know, he's a socialist. And, well, I mean, let her say She's smarter than me. <laughs> no, they say it ain't no sugar in this tea. This whole room smarter than you. Well, you know what? They actually had the tea party right in the Capitol. One of mm -hmm. the largest protests was at the Capitol. So I went outside and walked through it, mm -hmm. you know, and since I've been speaker, I have security details. So I, like, went with my security details. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the people that came <laughs> with you today. Yeah, they look pretty, yeah, they look pretty <laughs> scary. Yeah. yeah, they look yeah, tough they right look there. So my security <laughs> details. I know. I'm like looking at her hair is down. I, yeah, they're just like we were, that's uh, some tough linen they wear. Yeah, and the guy's tie is just scaring me. <laughs> I have a question. 
Again? Yeah. So when you win, Congresswoman, is Thank it Congresswoman? You. When you win, I'm not going to use the word if. Okay. When you win and you go to D.C., what difference, what would you bring to D.C. that's different than what the other people has failed us at? Miserably. Well, how could you, how and well, how do you plan to make change? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> From here on out, say you got a question. You, you can get the poet. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really a hand puppet. Po- poet has got a hand on my back, and she's doing all the talking through me. Well, she's a ventriloquist. <laughs> well, first of all, I appreciate that you say when. I can't do that. I have to say if because I don't want to be presumptuous. But here's, here's what, here's what I plan to do. If you claim your blessing, Christ okay. tells you to claim it. All right, all right. Believe well, I claim and it. thou claim shall it. receive. I claim it then. Yeah, and God is blessing him for that curse word earlier too, so don't worry about it. He's got that. I read that Bible speech when I was in a hotel that night. Maybe I'm in a hotel. Huh? Oh, gosh. Go, go ahead. Well, l- let me just say that the issues that I went to Sacramento to deal with are the same issues I want to deal with in Washington, and that's foster care. But the big thing in Washington that I, that I want to deal with is criminal justice reform. And I think that we ha- we're in a moment in history where we might be able to do that because I do believe Obama, you know, I was big on his campaign. And I remember one of the first times I met him, I talked to him about criminal justice reform. Changing some of these crazy sentencing laws that we did hey, in the man. whole crack cocaine epidemic, you That's know, in the 80s. And so the I 90s. really want to be able to do that. I tried to do that in Sacramento, but it was tough because of term limits. My colleagues are too afraid to take votes. They and then cocaine. they're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? How dare you arrest my supplier? 8772 106 the number not. if you want to call in and talk to the Congress. <laughs> or the House Speaker. I have, you house. I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Louis. Go, no, p- I no wanted to ask um, Tavis Smiley has been vocal um, lately. Do you. <laughs> Do you believe that um, the president should have a black agenda? Well, see, I mean, I do not. I mean, look, we were just talking about the Pea Party a few minutes ago. We were talking about white folks who woke up three months into it. And and I feel what Tavis is doing is no different than what they're doing. Well, I mean, my concern about that is, is that if he had something that was explicitly, this is my black agenda, I think he would be skewered. Mm -hmm. I think that there are ways to have a black agenda without necessarily calling like it Like pushing health care reform, jobs. Well, criminal justice right. reform, jobs, exactly. all of that stuff. There is a way to address it. You know, when I got up to Sacramento, I did what was called the State of Black California. Mm-hmm. I went to all of the major po- population centers where we live, mm-hmm. and I had town hall meetings, and I listened to the community. We came up with a legislative agenda, mm-hmm. and then we started, you know, introducing legislation, and I went back to the community to tell them about it. Mm-hmm. But once I became speaker, I couldn't do that. I have to represent the whole state. But that didn't change that I was going to push that legislation. Right. But I couldn't run up and down the state saying the state of black California anymore. Yeah. I, I have a question. I don't know if it's a question Both or a statement. Uh, uh, go, uh, no, go ahead, Matt. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I would like for you, when you go to D.C., to take me. Will you come with me? <laughs> I will come with you. Gosh. Impossible. But I'm, I'm going to come by Southwest. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit right next to Kevin Smith. But we're going to talk about that later. So, Because uh, I have a way, it's just my theory, that I can fix the health care situation in all of America in less than 30 minutes. How's that? H- here's how it is. All government elected officials, congresswomen, congressmen, house, uh, all, all you cast, everybody, the mayors, governors, <laughs> you no longer have health care for you and your family until everybody has mm-hmm. health care. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you they will pass that freaking bill in less than 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Because the people that's, that are, that, that's opposed to this, to uh, Barack Obama, says, they have health care. Right. Yeah. So it's exactly. not an emergency for them. Exactly. They look, uh, little Becky and Wanda Sue, they all up in the schools and they getting all kinds of the greatest health care. They own their prescription medication and they high and they doing all that. <laughs> if, if you strip them from that. Right. And if, if you take, trust me, they will pass, you making this hundred some thousand dollars a year, it's no longer any good. Your health care plan is void until everybody mm-hmm. have health Healthcare. Come on, Johnny Mac for something. Vote for me now. now Vote for me. Now, I, will I don't know if much. I'm going to be the DUI class Hold on, Lou, president Lou, I'm going to let you get in. I, will say, I, I, I went to uh, Canada where they have free health care. Uh-huh. No, you um, had a Canada dry. You know. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on the set hey, with Fox, cool. and I got hurt. And I, you just walk in. Mm-hmm. You I just mean, walk in, I and, they, and they and they treat you, and they, no, you don't. You sign your name in, and that's it. And that's, you walk I remember back that, Speedy. I remember that. And I'm sitting there going, so that's it. And it was like, that's it. I'm like, so I, you ain't I gave him, you ain't gave him the wrong name. You, you yeah, can use it. that name for something else, <laughs> but you just blew it. And it was really weird. And I just, I, I'm looking at at our at our country, going, we're the greatest country in the world, right? And, and we can't give everybody health care, even though now they're taxes, right? They wasn't no joke. No. But, no, but, but but you're you paying have, for something. 
You know what I mean? Did you see that movie Sicko? Because no, Michael Moore, it, Michael yeah. Moore talked about that. It's, Michael he Moore's went, a little strange, dude. Well, though. I know he is, but th- but there's this one real funny scene where he takes a boatload of folks over and goes over to Guantanamo. Boatload. Where they, Excuse where me. They, Never uh, say a boatload to African Americans. <laughs> Thank you. I was about to say, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. I said, Go ahead. I'm scared, sir. Oh, you want me to me. feed the killer sharks? <laughs> no, killer whales. I'm sorry, killer whales, sir? Go ahead. I'm he, sorry. Go, he goes to Guantanamo, and uh, he takes some folks that were involved in 9-11. They were actually uh, firefighters that uh-huh. got sick because uh-huh. of breathing, all of the stuff. Uh-huh. And so he took them to Guantanamo, where Al-Qaeda was being kept, and he said, "Can't I, can't I go there uh-huh. to get some health care?" Because they were, uh, you know, co- they were in Congress talking about what good health care they provided for Al Qaeda, wow. but yet they wouldn't provide the health care for the rescue folks wow. that got sick because of the dirt in 9/11, the Incredible. dust. Wow! But but th- but that's the whole thing. As, as His arm gonna fall off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to mess up your already stressed out blue sweater. <laughs> um, go ahead. Zipper release valve on. Um, speak, <laughs> Assembly Speaker Karen Best. I, I, uh, you were born in Los Angeles. Born and raised. Can you Me tell too. us a little bit about your history, uh, sure. where you went to high school, uh, what uh, forks in the road, what made you decide to go into what you the went into? The paved road or the, the well, public road? Which, well, you know what? Her road. Your road. Because everybody <laughs> has road. their own road. Yep, yep, yep. Well, uh, I lived on 49th and Central until I Ooh, was 10. I know exactly. And everyone. then we moved over around Venice and Fairfax. And huh? the time I grew up, see, I'm older than you guys. Uh, no. no, I'm close to you. No, it's a, lot, it's a lot of hair coloring up in here. Yeah. It's a lot, yeah. and a a lot, lot of grease and formula. And a lot of hair loss in here. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> that hat, it ain't raining outside, but he's still wearing a hat. But keep going. <laughs> so when His I, eyebrows when I, is falling out now. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to sit at home with my dad. He worked in the post office. And when he was off work, we'd watch the news. And the civil rights movement was happening. Mm-hmm. And I would watch the young folks at the lunch counter. And they would get the food dumped on their head because they were doing the non violent protests and so it was that it was the vietnam war mm. uh it was the black panther party all wow. of that influenced me as a teenager wow and so i first got involved when i was 14 mm-hmm. and i've been an activist ever since mm-hmm. now which high school oh i went to hamilton high school oh. we, used to, we used to call we used to call hamilton because i'm born and raised here. we used to call it hustling hamilton because everybody huh? there little hustler dudes used to always go to hamilton they'll, they'll half lean to She's the side a yeah, no, no, see, see, woman. she don't know about hustling. she don't know about hustling. Again. She don't know about hustling. My bad. Yeah, she know about hustling. Yeah, she does. She does. I went to Lennox. Long after my time. Yeah, that was. When I, wait, wait, when yeah. I went to Hamilton, Hamilton was an upper middle class, predominantly Jewish high school. Wow. Yeah. Okay. wow. And Dorsey, I think, was bagels uh, mostly, and uh, yarmulkes all around the place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a question. It's, it's, I'm yeah. sorry, my hand was up, though. Go ahead. That's, that's the protocol. I'm next. That's yeah. the protocol here at the Fox, so you got to raise your hand. Go ahead. Mo- most of us, you know, African Americans, most people, right? not just African Americans, we have never really been to the White House. We might have took a tour or whatever. So walk me through what it would be like or what it was like when you walked through the White House. What's, oh, the, what's the experience? What well, you know what? I have No, I don't some. know. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you. All right. <laughs> if you shut up. All right, Miss Hamilton. Hi. <laughs> Hustling, Hamilton. Prior, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, she went to the yarmulke. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yarmulke, Prior to Barack Obama, I never had any interest in going in the White House. Wow. Okay, I look at the White House and say, we built the White House. Wow. We built the Capitol. Tell them. There's no. So you didn't have no old shoes there. you wanted to throw at Bush. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So now the experience but now. When I went in this time, and it was my first time walking in the White House, going to the West Wing, I just have to tell you, it was an emotional experience because you walk in. And there's all these framed photos of the president in real time. So, like, because I'm a news junkie, I knew what all the photos were, you know, mm-hmm. where he was the day before and all of that. And, uh, and you see all these black folks on the wall. Wow. You know, I mean, it's the president, it's his family, <laughs> it's who he's with. But you also see all these black folks throughout the White House. And not just black, but, I mean, it looks like, you know, it looks like the United States. Right. Now, right. security around you when you walk around? Or you kind of can Oh, no, 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 no. There is definitely security oh, okay. there. You and, you know, there's, well, you, yeah, you can't even go in without security. And so I'm, I'm talking about going to the part of the White House that's not the tourist part, going okay. into the West Wing. So you didn't go to the Desiree Rogers part. You didn't go to that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what um what could we do as citizens to support your run to Congress? Is could 
or is it only Californians that can support your campaign, or is this a national campaign? Well, nationally, people can certainly contribute at KarenBass.com. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> you can get on I the love the way you talk. I love and the way you can absolutely contribute. Can you sing? You had a nice uh, song. No, one. I cannot sing at all. <laughs> hey, what would you be doing if you were not? I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. You didn't have you your were, hand up. I, no, I did not have my finger up. Excuse me. If you were not in politics, what uh -huh. would you be doing? Well, running a bingo hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I did when I used to I used to lead a double life before 1990. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> My day job was in the emergency room at Big County Hospital. Mm -hmm. I was in the trauma center. Oh, and so yeah. I would work there during the day and then when I was off work at night, I'd be involved in the community. Whether we were working around free and Nelson Mandela or Indian apartheid or you know, fighting police abuce, all those issues I worked you on. You should always keep fighting it. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I was I know. abused by the John police. John uh, yeah, knows firsthand about that. I should I say first club? You were yeah. abused by the police? <laughs> <laughs> I was the eighth oh, of the club. Very seldom we hear stories of females being abused by someone. Oh, in yeah. Your well, when I, well, no, 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 not now. I mean, when I was younger, absolutely we were harassed by the police. Girls are harassed by the police. You talk to girls sometimes. Well, they get pulled that's over That's part of his problem. Uh, you don't talk hassled. to girls. I, I, I don't don't put it out there like that. I I, I I like women. I'm just not with the woman right now. He's with this dude, but they no, try no, to. Come on, out. Speedy. I'm not, not with the dude. That. I'm just celibate right now. Not, Shut up. Not I have a question. Yeah. Thank you. What? <laughs> what with all this fighting between the Democrats and and the Republicans, Republicans. what is really missing right now? Well, well I, I see. I, I think especially if you're talking about in Washington, I think the Republicans are trying to bring down the presidency straight up. Yes, wow. I think. I so think that's too. what they're trying to do, and I think their spokesperson Rush Limbaugh says that he wants to see him fail. I mean, he's he's pretty direct around that. Because I think their biggest fear is. Has that anybody he... ever shot at Rush Limbaugh? I'm just Ooh. I, I think, no, no, no. I'm Nobody was. Asking. No, we don't. We don't they try, hold on, they tried. I didn't say that they hit him. <laughs> you know, Dick Cheney shot a, a dude in the face. I'm, so shooting does happen in, in politics. He peppered. <laughs> <laughs> he peppered. Him. But I think I think their biggest fear. But is we're nonviolent people. Yes, here. we are. Yes, I, think, I think their biggest fear, John. America. Stop, John. <laughs> no, no, no. At this table, oh, we're oh. nonviolent people. I you said America. I think their biggest <laughs> fear is that uh, <laughs> is that he does do well. And then he'll get a second term and then have to deal with him another four years. Exactly. And, and they don't want to do that. Well, and I think he's trying to bring about the type of change that our that nation needs. Be, yeah. And, you know, the Republican Party, I think, is about protecting corporations, protecting the wealth, mm -hmm. doing what they did the last eight years that has wrecked the havoc that's what that led to, to the economic collapse that we had. Nobody talks about that. And that's what I know. Right. No one They're talks acting about like that. he caused the economic they want collapse. Obama, they want Obama to fix it in one year. Right. Uh, I thought this man tore it down in eight years. And I, I was talking to this young lady about that, and she was like, well, Obama ain't did this. And I said, sweetheart, imagine this. Imagine he was running a mile, and you gave me an eight-minute start. Would you ever catch me? Right. How hard would it be to catch me? It's impossible. But I'm not saying Barack thing is impossible. But you let Bush and his cabinet run America down to the muck and the Murray, and you wanted this uh, young Murray. man. Yeah, you, Murray's you, Grease? Yeah, read the Bible, please. It's in the Bible. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm trying to have an educated conversation. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> he just got the G. He waiting on the D. Trust me, it's going to come. <laughs> so so that's, that's my whole thing to Russ Limbaugh and all the other cats, all the Republicans. Give my man a shot. They he not. can't do no worse. Right. He can't do any worse. Right. This man is, is trying to bring us out of a terrible hole with the bank situation, the, the, the insurance situation, and, and, and the housing situation. Everybody was, was going under. And just get his cat. If he failed, at least he failed trying. Right. I right, think right. Mark Twain said but he's, the great thing about success, the best way to start success is to start. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know I could, yeah, I I could quote Mark Twain. <laughs> I didn't know you could Wouldn't read. You agree Shout out to Bazooka Bubblegum that taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you agree that um, our president has made many strides with um, things such as recently, because back to the black agenda thing, he recently um, approved a $1.25 billion settlement for the black farmers. Right. And also d um, supported millions of dollars for the HBCU. So... I don't know why. Now, I knew about the HBCU. I didn't know we had black farmers. Where do they grow? <laughs> uh, popcorn. <laughs> hey, we, we have it's a black, Popeye chicken farm somewhere we, around. We have black farmers in California. They sure really? do. What do they grow? We do. They grow all sorts of things, fruits and vegetables, just like yeah. any other farmer. Things but, that come out of the ground. But those black farmers were uh, farmers in the south.
yes. um, yeah. you know, who had been cheated out of their property. But we do have a, a number of black farmers in California. I wanted to ask you a question. Is, is it required by law? Because sometimes when I'm in Koreatown, mm -hmm. uh, when I'm in Koreatown, I see the, the name of the store Science, in Korean, and underneath right. it has English. Do they have to have that? No, they don't. Because in Koreatown, you will also see some businesses where the signs are just in Korean. So, you know, that's one of those one of those issues that comes up periodically. So you see both in Korea. Okay, and one other thing. What is going on in California that you cannot use the restroom when you have to go to a gas station or something? That's the one thing that bothers me when Say you have children. Mean, She's not well, no, no, what I'm saying is, no, in, around Los Angeles, when you go to these gas stations that you go get gas, right. or you go to a store in our right. neighborhood, and your child has to use the bathroom, they say it's out of order. We can't use the bathroom. Well, you know what it is. You have to go in the valley where somebody might let you use it. But well, all the our stores well, and gas well, stations. Move to the us. valley. I never had Well, no, problem. I'm just saying. They, you can't, if you have a you young child. Have roads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I had a saying. great joke. But is there a law Congress for that? I mean, yes, can, there is a law. There is a law. Actually, it was passed by one of my mentors, Gwen Moore, especially in grocery stores. They have to have accessible bathrooms. And so, you know, well, oftentimes laws are passed, but then the question is how they're enforced. Right, so uh, are, are, ba are gas stations required to have restrooms for I don't, you? I don't know about gas stations. I know grocery stores are. I don't know about gas stations. Why don't you stations. just use the bathroom at home? That's Look, what I'm, I'm at the age where you have to go to the bathroom. Oh my God. No, that's Okay, called, so maybe you're not at that a, age That's yet. called a prostate examination. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> Jesus, she's a congresswoman, a future congresswoman for Christ's sake. And, and there okay. might be a law I'm where a, she has to pass more bathroom. Too. Yes, where they have to mend That's a process where we have oh to go to the God. restroom. If you have children, <laughs> Johnny Mac, and your so. child can't go to the Did restroom, you eat the hot dog it's nothing more embarrassing. What happened? But it's nothing more embarrassing than your child going to the bathroom. You said you, my well, God. I mean, me too. I mean, I'm a, a human. I, we're sorry for that, Miss Bass. Yeah, we apologize. Okay. I don't know what What, what do you with. feel are some of the biggest challenges <laughs> See, California <laughs> is facing right now? Well, you know what? Bathroom. Um, <laughs> no bathrooms and gas stations. No. And bottles. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to have to look that up about gas stations. Maybe we need to pass that oh law. Oh, my it's not God. There. <laughs> well, they're, and they're rude about it. But let, let me just say, in terms of the biggest problems California face, when I was uh, uh, sworn in as speaker two uh, years ago, we had a budget of $110 billion. Wow. Today, our budget is $85 billion. So you're talking about schools, you're talking about colleges, you're talking about foster care, you're talking about all these different programs that our community desperately needs but, that have been but, but, almost but eliminated. Don't, I thought when they did the, uh, the lottery... That was supposed to help out. That's the not helping? The lottery only funds about less than 10% of the education budget. They made us think that that I know was going to fund so, everything. I know. And right. uh, can I wow. add that, okay, so now they're examining a lot of the marijuana laws. Mm -mm. Do you think uh -oh. that that would, um, by legalizing marijuana in California, that that would help the budget? No, but one thing but they that might I forget do. Because <laughs> <laughs> they be high. <laughs> I had this pen to write something with it. <laughs> you don't think no, so? Well, you know, one, one of the things, one of my colleagues wants to <clears throat> legalize marijuana and tax it. The, the problem, just like with a lot of the criminal justice laws, I won't be able to get my caucus members to vote for that because then they would get ridiculed in their district right. and they might not win the next time. But what I do think that we do need to look at raising the taxes, though, is on the, the, the marijuana that's already legal because marijuana is pretty much legal now. It's just called medical marijuana, right? Mm -hmm. But on all those shops Portis, that opened Portis. up um, where the city does tax, you know, uh, on, we should look at raising state taxes on those because it's already legal there. So I do think that's something that could be looked at. But... If you did tax all of those places, it's going to add up to about a penny ninety nine. You know what I mean? Wow. Because I mean, it, it might add up to. See, I think of money so differently now. Wow. It's like now yeah. I think of money in the billions. You know, if it's like five or ten million, that's like you know that doesn't do much. Miss Congress, well, Miss Miss Bass, did you know there's a university in Oakland, California, Oakhurst, that teaches you how to raise and sell? Oaksterdam. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 your medical marijuana. Well, I actually. And the now, how do we give scholarships for African Americans? <laughs> but the councilwoman that already there, got the little supply in the backyard. <laughs> the councilwoman there pointed out that that district has been very helpful to Oakland since we're on that. Topic. Well, you know, um, also there's a TV show. I don't know if you've seen this. There's a cable Weeds. show. No, 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 no. It's a TV no. show called Weeds on Showtime. No, okay. no, they, right? No, no, no. This is like a. Um, well, it's a, well, you can turn on the show and they'll tell you how to grow it. They'll tell you. It's, it's uh, you know, like, 
I guess it's for people that are in the business. Mm -hmm. It's a trade show. Like a I'm about to say it's called cops. No, it's, <laughs> right. that sounds like a setup. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling, be just my luck, Speed. I just want to be to that later. We have a phone call from you from Ohio. See so if you're talking about getting oh, high. Wow. Ohio. Tone. How y'all doing, you. man? Hey, what's up, Stone Tone? I'm going to keep it brief, man, because I know y'all ain't got a lot of time to hear me talk, but That's I want to tell everybody in there congratulations <laughs> on what y'all doing, man. Thank I you, appreciate brother. listening to y'all every day. Y'all bring my mood up. So. Thank you, brother. And Johnny Mac, you are one of the funniest people I have never seen before. I don't even know what you and look you like. And you never will, <laughs> unless you I go down to a jailhouse or a post office. How about I'll be in your local 7-Eleven yeah. soon? Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. All right. Are you taking a picture of me right now? No. Oh, go ahead. Go that ahead. was it. Go ahead, Tone. Was that it? That was it. I guess. Oh, that's it. one of your family members. I ain't oh. got nobody in Ohio. I don't. I've never been to a family reunion. We we'll talk about that later. We got. So, we go. got to take a quick break for Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time when you bring Bud Light to the party. Bud Light's unique ability to elevate good times with friends is what makes it the perfect beer for bringing people together. Bud Light is the best-selling American-style light lager because of its superior drinkability that's just right. Yeah. Not too heavy and not too light. Bud Light is refreshing and great tasting. It's fun, social, and the perfect beer to enjoy with friends when Bud you want to have a good time. Bud Light, Light. Bud Light's drinkability Light. is what sets Bud Light apart from Thank other you. light beers. Next time right. you get together with friends, Make Everyone. sure you bring Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. And, and don't drink it while you're driving over those potholes. You'll I'm spill it. I'm telling you, those. Jesus Christ, now you're going to be smelling like lime all day. You don't want that to happen to you. And we have Assemblywoman Karen Bass in the house yes. with us. She's um, in 72 hours is getting ready to now. prepare her Countdown. campaign. Speaker Emeritus. What? Now, on who are the people Monday, with you? On, huh? Who are the people with you? Oh, this is Nalise Edwards. She's my Hello, chief Louise. of staff. She hey. runs everything. Hey, I know her. How are you? She's nice. That's my boss. Yeah, uh -oh. she is nice. She, she, she runs everything. Okay, That's cool. right. And then Shani, Shannon Murphy is my communications director. Right. An Shannon. Irish girl. And um, I hear that you're passing the torch on to Assemblyman John Perez. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. And he's, Sorry, this, Assembly and man. he's wonderful, and you got to put him on the show. Okay, she's the first African American woman Please. as a assembly. You didn't bring me to DC with you. Okay. Yes, congratulations. She was the first African American woman to be a assembly. <laughs> and then it says here that um, John is going to be the first openly gay male to take this what? position. Yep, yes. yep, yep. Does Does Ricky Smiley know that? <laughs> <laughs> he probably do. Yeah, he'll probably he'll write a song for him. It's a long. It's a. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell Again, you about if you want to support <laughs> assembly woman, uh, well, we she's former. <laughs> Go to KarenBass.com to support the Congress. Yep. If you have a question That's for us, right. call in. 877 is the number to call. Do you need any comedians to write for you? Uh, always. Always. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, do y'all do Don't background check? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, That'll blow it right there. <laughs> Let me know. You've already picked up a lot of support from, like, Diane Feinstein, and, of course, Diane Watson has given her blessing as well. Exactly. Any opposition? Who are you running against? Well, uh, right now I'm not sure. You know, I'll know for sure March 17th. That's when the filing closes. But there's mm. Three Republicans running, but there's probably only about ten Republicans in the district. So, do you like Republicans? I, you know, they're people. They're people <laughs> I mean, too. You know, they're cool. You can feed they're them. They're people and pet them. too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but that, that was a politically they correct hot. answer. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, because I no, know that's no, your opposition. No, no, no. Let me tell you seriously. You know, um, as speaker, and again representing eighty, I represent the Republicans too, and I actually have close friends that are Republicans. We just disagree, and so it's not personal. Is it? It's not personal. But they take it personal. They no, they do. don't. You know what? That's you know what we do? Well, especially in the assembly. Now, I can't talk about Congress, but sometimes when you see us fight, sometimes it's a little bit of theater. Okay. Uh, now, are you? Oh, yeah, it's it's like, like yesterday it's when like a Mike Tyson pre-fight. <laughs> like <laughs> yesterday when the president told uh, McCain, John McCain, hey, campaign, campaign is over. over. Hey, that was hysterical. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so you have a, you, you raised a family too, in all of this. <laughs> yes. Lewis. Congratulations. Thank okay. you. We're gonna take a break. Yeah, we got the we, wonderful, we go very <laughs> soft spoken. I just love the way you speak, Miss Bass. Thank I just you. think it's fantastic and. I don't know where I'm going to go vote at, but I, you get guarantee I'm going to vote with you. You can't you, vote. You got to vote behind that preposition I can vote first. I, you, I can guarantee I will vote with you with the left and the right hand. So All right. Vote let, us know, let us know when the election is. We're going to take a I quick will. break, and you're going to come back and give us some information when the election is. And we take a quick break. Hey, yo, we love Miss Karen Bass right now. 877-2106106, the number to call in, too, if you want to talk. Yo, we're back. Yeah. Fox Hill Radio, baby. Sirius XM. The phone number to call in to talk to the uh, house speaker is 8772. Yes, in the house with us is the Speaker Karen Bass. 
who's getting ready to make the run for Congress. And you were speaking earlier about um, criminal justice. That was going to be what your yeah. primary, one do, of your focuses. Sexy, Porter, say it all. <laughs> over this and, and I want to know. Speedy, take oh, a deep breath. Hold on, Speedy. I want you to do it nice I, and cool over this beautiful bed of music that my, we can't call him Lil Marcus no more, but my nephew Marcus Anthony is playing. Notice how my voice smooth on out to that. Okay, thank you, Johnny. <laughs> All right. Never rush me. All right. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the things that you feel needs to be fixed with the criminal justice system? Well, let me give you an example of some things on a state level. Uh, when I got up to Sacramento, I found out that there's 54 occupations in the state that you cannot get a license in if you have had a conviction. Mm. So I looked at some of those occupations, and the first one I went after was barbering. So just think about this. You in can't. state prison, we teach you how to be a barber, right? Yeah. But then we don't let you get a license because you've had a conviction. Well, why do we teach you how to oh, be a barber? Not, yeah. But you can work in the construction industry, so you can handle a jackhammer, but you can't handle scissors. Wow. So, well, I, can, I can respect that. <laughs> <laughs> scissors is why you was there. <laughs> So maybe maybe we can, maybe we can put restrictions. I'm, I'm this serious. Maybe we could put restrictions on the guy that's running the barber. Maybe we can let. That's what we did. Okay. That's what we did. I got the governor to sign a bill that says that if you have a conviction, you can become a barber, but you will get a like a provisional license. Right. And so what I did in in my time in the assembly was I tried to go systematically after all of those occupations, because what we've done in our society it used to be when I was growing up. If you committed a crime and you did your time, you paid your debt to society, you could be reintegrated back in society. Yeah. Shout but out to Mark, it, Michael Vick. I like that. It, right. But in this whole era of get tough on crime, we've now said that if you ever have a felony, you have a life sentence. You serve yeah. some of that life sentence behind bars. You serve the rest of it when you get out because you can't work. Can't a lot of either. people think you can't vote, but you can vote if you have a felony conviction. You just can't vote while you're on parole. That's true. You used to be a lawyer or something? No, no, I was in the medical field. Oh, didn't you hear it a third time? She so what are, what are, I worked, I'm just amazed at her, her knowledge, her knowledge about the law. So I'm she thinking, reads, John. That is true. That is true. <laughs> you put an S on that? She reads. <laughs> and she helps pass some of the laws. It's E-S, dummy. I'm so sorry. You are dumb. <laughs> and, and what are some of the other disparities you feel? Well, well, you know, there's certainly the disparity between crack and powder cocaine. I mean, there's that. Uh, all of the laws that were well, passed. Want to explain the difference? What did you say? Yeah, sure. I can explain yeah, the difference. Yeah, yeah. Tell me the difference. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, difference? crackhead. Well, I, the, the difference <laughs> is if it's a powder form, it's like having possession and possession for sale. If it's in the rock form, the cocaine form, you, everybody knows it's for sale. If it's for, in the powder, it just can have a possession. That's, that's, that's separation from getting three to five and a 15. <laughs> yeah, but you could take the powder and turn it into But you rock. ain't done it yet. And you can still have that. You still have, you can still have it rocked up, but if it's not right. in the baggie, it could be for a purpose, your your own use. Yeah. And then I can just get you like you know thirty, maybe ninety days because. So, so yeah, what you're but saying is. if you is, have a pound of powder cocaine, that ain't for your own use. I could be making some special powder donuts. <laughs> <laughs> So what you said, Johnny Mac? <laughs> that's what, well, that's what I said. <laughs> I have a donut party. And I need this powder. What you said is the baking soda is what gets you in trouble. Because now it's a chemical. As long as you don't put the baking soda with it, and and the water, and, we talk about that. Yeah, we talk about that. <laughs> but that's but but that's the difference, Miss 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 Bass. I know, but that's wrong because what John. happens is is that you can have literally a pound of powder cocaine, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. and then you can have one uh, one hundredth of that in rock form. And you're going to do more time for, for rocks. those rocks than you are for that pound of powder. And, and so what happens is, is that if you look at who gets incarcerated, it tends to be African Americans and Latinos who the have the rocks mm -hmm. and white folks who have the powder. And so you have that inequity. Now, in the state assembly, we actually tried to change that. The problem is, is that what the Republicans said is, okay, fine, let's just increase the incarceration rate for powder. <laughs> Wow. But that, but that's not what should be done right. because you know I, I did say I have a health background. Right. So when I look at addiction, to me, I'm looking at a medical problem. 
And, you know, when it comes to our society, depending on how rich you are and how famous you are, mm-hmm. if you have an addiction, you go have a press conference if you're, you know, Charlie Sheen or Ooh. somebody like that. Ooh. But, you know, if you're Mr. Washington on the corner, you know. Isaiah uh, Washington? Well, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a celebrity and if you're a poor person, especially a young black male, mm-hmm. you know, you are treated as the scum of the earth. That's yeah. true. But, you know, celebrities have addictions. They announce their addiction. They right. go into treatment they right. tell everybody how they're doing and it's almost celebrated that's true so, so are you also over the um uh, well your, your fear would also be over the appeals board as far as like incarceration when people get out well most people well, doesn't... i i think that some of the sentencing laws that focus on nonviolent drug offenders need to be changed uh again because i think addiction is a disease and it should be treated from a health perspective no it's not a disease so, it is John. it is so, not it is not a disease because it, a disease to me, to go from, from cancer, leukemia, and all these things, is something that you didn't do to obtain this. But a, but a, a, a cocaine addiction, you started this, and you can end this on your own. Oh, you started I can't cancer start can- too. You started cancer too. If you're a smoker. What if I'm not a smoker? What if I just call? You know? What if I just call it lymphoma? Well, I a mean, Hopkins that, disease. What if but, I just got but, that? But see, I don't know that you should really pass judgment on an illness when somebody is sick. I think they should be treated because you could look at diabetes that way. You could look mm-hmm. at heart disease but, but, that way. But, but, no, you I'm, ate I'm too ta- many hamburgers. You had a heart self, attack. A self-induced cocaine addiction. That is not an illness. You didn't hear what she just said. What about I, when you get heart disease, John, from eating the wrong type of foods? If you're too heavy I, I and think, you have diabetes, yeah. I think a heart illness and a crack addict is a whole lot different. Well, no, 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 no. It is. I'm just it saying. Is. I'm just saying. It is, but physiologically, now see, you don't want me to go off and. Yes, I do. You can't tell me nothing about the crack. You can't tell me about no crack, no weed. Yes, I can. (laughs) (laughs) I was teasing. So, are you saying that. I can work a triple beam, trust me. So, are you saying that instead of putting these people, lock them up to, to divert, to. You know, allow them the option to get treatment. Yeah, I think that they should be treated like rich addicts are treated. That's true. And as long as you didn't commit a crime or not. Like well, yeah. Uh, you know, the other the other reason why we incarcerate people, an awful lot of people are incarcerated because they have mental health problems. I mean, we have one of the most expensive mental health, uh, well, actually, it's a jail. You know, the Twin Towers down there. Yeah. I mean, one of the whole parts of the Twin Towers yeah. is for people who are mentally ill. And, you know, we spend an awful lot of money incarcerating people with mental illness, with addiction. And, you know, I mean, I'm all for incarcerating people who are hardcore tr- criminals, especially violent criminals. But I just think we misuse the criminal justice system for political reason, because politicians want to get elected. And so one of the ways you get elected is by saying you're tough on crime. But, but haven't you heard, and I've heard this throughout my life, living here, born, being born and raised here, that California is a prison state because we have more prisons. The reason why we have more prisons is because of three strikes. When we passed three strikes, Mm -hmm. uh, that required California to build from 12 to 14 prisons in order to incarcerate Mm -hmm. all the folks. What do you think of the three strikes? I think three three strikes should be ended, but given that it's not going to be ended, I think it should be changed. And the third strike should have to be a violent crime. But but do you see where they're coming from in the sense of, if a person does something, gets arrested three times for the same thing, apparently they haven't gotten it. Because we were getting arrested for stealing cars five, six, seven times, right. and they hadn't gotten the message. So I guess I that was their way of getting they, it. Right. And, and, but what's happened, though, is that the majority of strikers, or a large number of strikers, are there for crazy crimes. I mean, mm. you've heard of the guy that stole the pizza, the yeah. guy that stole the batteries. I, I know a boy yeah, that stole a box of ice cream sandwich, and that was his third strike. 25 yeah. years. Yeah. 25 with the L. Right. It's called, you know. Black Does he still eat ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> he don't want no ice cream. Who put the ice cream on my tray? That's what I'm in here for, man. That's the Bud Light joke of the day right there. <laughs> it's the <a> Bud Light. <laughs> it's the sure sign of a good time for sure when you bring Bud Light to the party. Bud Light's unique ability to elevate good times with friends is what makes it the perfect beer for bringing people together. Bud Light is the best-selling American-style light lager because of its superior drinkability that's just right. It's fun, social, and the perfect beer to enjoy friends when you want to have a friends. good time. No ice cream in that. <laughs> Bud Light's drinkability is what sets Bud Light apart from other light beers. Next time you get together with friends, make sure you bring Bud Light. And make the sure there's a bathroom available because little dicks might come by and <laughs> treat some of your own bladder. <laughs> little baby bladder. Yo, we got, a, we, got a, we got a question. We got a call in for you, Miss Harris. I like to call you Miss Harris. Harris. 
Huh? Miss Bad. Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Bad. Hey, he Michael. said I like to call you Miss Harris. <laughs> you hey, stupid. Mike, Michael Jordan missed a few shots, and, and so did Kobe. <laughs> no, we talking about that later. We got out. Now this is the person's actual name, so forgive uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. Minaj, not Twa. Minaj <laughs> is calling in from Cali. What's up, Minaj? This, it better not be a dude. It better not be no dude. <laughs> no, this is a dude. What's happening? Uh, I need to change it. <laughs> hey, what's what up? up? Uh, I can't call you that. What's up, player? <laughs> what's up, Paul? What's up, y'all? What's up, Paul? This? What's up? You know him? How you been? Hey, mm -hmm. I, had a I had a few questions. First of all, I wanted to know uh, for Mrs. Bass, um, with the current unemployment rate in California, do you think that the release of nonviolent inmates will add to the deficit in California? Ooh. Will add to the deficit? I mean, as far as, like, you know, people, you know, when, when uh, offenders got to jail, it's no. often in the place in jobs. So the, the, will it add to our deficit as far as fighting no. crime or... No, the, the early release you're talking about, we did have to uh, vote because there were too many people that were locked up and we had to make cuts in correction. So we did vote to release some folks early, but it's not a big deal because the same people were coming out. The difference is, is that we cut their time down by about a month. They were going oh, to be out. released in two months, and instead we released them in a month. Now, now what do you mean by... There, there's too many people because of the, the way they're housed, or is well, it just... we have we have incredible overcrowding because we lock everybody under the sun. That's up. what I'm saying. And so one of the things <laughs> that we did change, though, that that I feel real good about is that you know California has the highest recidivism rate of any state in the United States. Uh, say that, that word again. That means oh, recidivism rate. Out. That means that you go right back into jail. Okay. Right. So the average person that comes out of state prison mm -hmm. stays out of state prison eight. Months, seventy percent of them go okay. back within eighteen months. That's okay, true. and so the reason why we have the highest recidivism rate is because we would violate people for technical reasons. That's you right. had a dirty urine, you didn't show up for your appointment, and so finally we ended that. We passed legislation so that if you have a technical violation, you, we can't send you back to prison. You have to commit a new crime. But how can I find out about that crime? Because if you know when I go into the to the system or whatever, if they arrest me for whatever I did, and I don't know about these new laws that have been passed, because I know in Oakland they had to release like, because they was they was giving you back in the days to give you like the crime plus the pri priors. The priors we right. get you all the time, right. but now they have cut down that you can't get sentenced for the priors just for that initial crime that whatever I've been arrested for. Well, well let me just. But tell how you, do I know to apply? You know, she's about to answer. Well, you question. well let me just tell you that when we did pass that law, a bunch of counties took advantage of it and they just started releasing people. What's and the that's good thing? not what the law said. And so unfortunately, and this always happens, right? There's always a knucklehead. So they released John. one guy. And then, you know, a few hours after he was released, he tried to rape someone. And so then that's exactly why legislators don't want to vote. But, but like you said, if it's a nonviolent, I mean, if someone has went in there for a, a nonviolent crime, I, I think you should be more favorable toward that cat than a cat that it, because rape is a violent crime, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you, you should look at what this guy did or this person did. I ain't going to say it's a guy. You should look at what this person did. And if he did a violent thing, then we should not, you know, release him to the street. But some guy's in there for having uh, 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 six parking tickets or, or right. whatever, something stupid like that, then release it. If the guy is not a threat to our, a, a physical or a violent threat to our society, we should let this cat out. And that's exactly why we passed the laws that we did. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I, I learned how to cook up with powder. We got a great, <laughs> great phone call. This cat is, is uh, I can't say his name, Quasi, Quasi from the NYC. Uh, what's going on, Quasi? How you brothers doing today? That's your What's name, right? Doing moto, quasi moto. I say right. Sir. Well, we ain't gonna go that far. No, we ain't go that far with the moto part, but oh. we can stay with my name. Um, okay. I did ten years in New York State, and one of the things I wanted to share with you that if you want to change reform, you have to place individuals who are incarcerated in a way that they can get education that's right. pertaining to jobs that are available right now, just to suggest to people they got to go to work. Now it can help them. They need right. high-paying skill jobs, right. and you need to know that ahead of time. Well, so when you get locked up and you go through your precepts investigation report and you're going to do time, you should know there are jobs available to you when you get out based upon your academic qualifications, skill qualifications, and then when you're doing your time, you should be put in those jobs or those programs or skill sets ahead of time. Well, you know what, you're absolutely right, especially because if you look at the prison population, a large percentage of inmates cannot read or write, did not graduate high school. Mm. Came from the child welfare system, you know. I mean, now, so, I, so you did a background search on me, huh? That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cool. I, didn't I was trying not to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, 
what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to suggest to you is I taught in prison as well as when I came home. Uh-huh. So when you have individuals incarcerated and they're looking for education, you have to be able to have people that can give it to them in a way that they understand it. Well, you can't you know, have somebody teach someone who's not ready to be taught, but you have to have somebody can bring it to that level. One of the problems hmm. that we have in California, and I'm sure you have the same problem in New Thank York, you for phone call. is that we have such a large deficit, and we cut $11 billion from K-12 through education, that it makes it very hard for people like me, who agree with you 100%. Me too. But how do I argue for those resources in a prison when we're cutting education K-12? through You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, what, what do you mean by we're cutting? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, is that we took eleven billion dollars out of schools. Now, what that meant was right. hundreds, if well, thousands of teachers were laid off. You know, classes were cut, class sizes increased. That's what it means when you cut education. You were essentially who okay that? Right. Who, who okay that? What idiot would ever okay to lay and fire teachers? What, you know, what, I mean, who, I, hey, why did they fire him? Well, well, let me just tell you. Because he's the governor. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, you know, I have to take responsibility Uh-oh. because we You're all, fine. well, no, I mean, I participated in it, too. I voted in it. It was part of what I negotiated because we didn't have any choice. And one of the reasons why we didn't have any choice was because the economic crisis was so bad. The reason why it was, California, by the way, if you don't know, was home to 40% of the foreclosures in the entire country. Mm. And when you have massive foreclosures and massive unemployment, you don't have the money in the state to pay for the schools. Mm. So we wow. had that's why our budget went from 110 billion to 85 because we had to make certain cuts for the for the state not to go into I default. Hate to, uh, and, 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 oh, we got we got a, a quick go, question. We got a phone. We got are, a phone. I know, but <laughs> our schools <laughs> are schools always the first one? Is that what it, no, are no, they the No, I just mentioned that. the drug program. Uh, we have a uh, <laughs> we have another phone call. We got Eric from Cali. What up, Eric? E money. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's that? Uh, just another beautiful day, man. But it's always beautiful when you're still breathing. Uh, I have a question for uh, the man that's there. I believe yeah, her name is Miss Bass. Miss Bass. Miss Vance. Uh, I'm active duty military, so this doesn't really apply to me. But uh, the health reform that uh, Obama's trying to push through. I was wondering if you had any kind of insight as to whether or not Congress has already voted on that or if it's a pending vote or if it's even been submitted yet. Well, yes, Congress has voted on it, but it's still not finished. And so there is a bill that's pending in the House that was passed by the Senate, and that's part of what they're negotiating now. So it has been voted on, but there's many more votes that need to take place before it gets to the president's desk. Can he just say, we're going to do this? Then we have to have a vote about everything. It's good for the people. Yep. You know, and I know I know our, our red tape and how we got to go through the chain of command. I know all this stuff. But isn't it a time for us to say, like, we're making a lot of changes and other things. Hey, this is for the good of the people. We're not going to leave it for you cast a vote. Uh, uh, I can't curse. But <laughs> doggone it, we're going to have health care. <laughs> that gum it. Yeah, we're going to take a break and come right back with the incredibly intelligent and lovely Miss Karen Bang. <laughs> Not Harris. 8772 106 106, the number. Call in, baby. Can we just do that? I mean, God damn. Yo, we're back. We're back, baby. We're back. You know what I love about today's show? We, we're just educated. Yourself. Today's show is it's, it's like I really learned something, and, and it's really hit me in the heart. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I listened to Miss Bass speak about if you committed a felony, no matter what, what year it was, whatever, you still is getting scrutinized or getting pressured by the cops in a situation like that. And she's fighting for the, it. Still be a, it should be a statute of limitation for if I committed some a crime, allegedly committed a crime <laughs> back in 1988, whatever the year it was, or 91. If you allegedly got convicted. It was 81 or 91. I forgot what it is. And we should have. And I was talking to your, uh, 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 Miss, Miss Bass. I was talking to the young lady mm-hmm. in the yellow jacket. I forgot her name. No lease. No lease. Yes. And I was just talking to her, and she said like how we, we need to stop. Anybody and everybody that may have fell victim to the system way back in the days, and we're still scrutinized or running scared or or, or, or situations like that, it has to be a statute of limitations. So, it, well, let me just tell you how bad it is. See, that's the problem with three strikes. You could have committed two felonies when you were 15, right? And then when you're 40, right, commit another felony, and it be it's your third strike. Your ju- juvenile felonies count. Wow. So, see, there's a lot of things that are... So it's not a statute of limitation as far as the three strikes? No. Wow. No. No. And and they haven't changed that yet. How can I be so uncruel? Well, you know, you see, the problem is... Who is voting for these people that's in charge of this Well, let me just tell you. The problem is, is that when these laws come up, 
what they do is they talk about some horrific crime, and that's what they put there. And you don't want to just put that guy away. You want to execute that guy, okay, yeah, because right. his crime was so bad. Right. So then you go for emotional reasons, and then you vote for that. But you don't think of all of the implications, just like they had a law on uh, uh, the books a couple of years ago around sex offenders. Well, no one wants a sex offender out, right? Right. right. But so people vote emotionally, and they don't think about the fact that when we pass that sex offender law, what that means is, is that now sex offenders aren't registering, they're disappearing. Because essentially what we said is, is that you can't live anywhere. Now, now I don't want y'all to uh, uh, let's do a quick roll call right now, letting everybody know who's in the house. Over here we have. Oh, Speaker Karen Bass. <laughs> Over here we got. Yo, it's your boy Speaker. I'm proud of you today, Speaker. You're doing your job. Over here we got. OG Poet. Smoke weed every day. No, no, oh, did no, you have no, to no. throw that in? No, That's how we say your name. Uh, and of course, I am Johnny. I won't say in front of Ms. Bass, but I am Johnny. Motherfucker. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to you know, get a name. But now, 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 back to what you were saying. Uh, 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 Ms. Bass, say that one more time. I, I lost my train of thought. Well, the, we, we vote emotionally. So Jessica's law came up a couple of years ago, and mm. it's about having sex offend, not allowing sex offenders to live anywhere near a school or a park. So many restrictions were written in that sex offenders now can't live anywhere. So the problem is that now sex offenders aren't registering. They're disappearing. They're going so underground. So you want them to change the law to, to I what? would rather them register so we know where they are. Okay. But we shouldn't put so many restrictions so that they go underground. Then you have sex offenders all over the place and you don't know they're there. And and, and, and this is going to sound really crazy, and I'm about to say. Don't say it. But I'm going to say it anyway, Speedy, because I'm drinking Bud Light. Uh, I think <laughs> that if that person, like you said, sex offenders can't live anywhere. And I remember once uh, earlier back you said if, if the guy went to was incarcerated and did his time, right. he paid his debt to society. When he right. gets out, he has the right, you know, what I'm saying to make a living and live. Right. And as you just said, sex offenders can't live anywhere. Now I don't want right. to be near a sex offender at at any time. Don't you want to know where they are? I, I want to know where they are. But do that guy, you know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, does the sex offender have the right to live in our society and become a normal? constituents of our community or whatever the case may be that he paid his debt to society no, no matter how heinous his crime was nope. he paid his so he can't live nowhere what are we gonna do put him on a uh, uh, shutter island well see that which was a terrible movie but but, but that on. but that's the problem so now you have some states that have also passed these laws like they passed these laws in florida and you have sex offenders now living under freeways because you know nobody wants them in their building nobody wants them around and then the problem is i don't is, either well yeah I, I don't either but i do want to know where they are I don't want them to you go underground. You just said they're on, they're on, yeah, on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> I drive past them every day. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Get you out of that pothole. <laughs> they do have websites where you can go on and see if there are the ones that did register, how many are in your area. Right. What if I, okay, we, we got a, qu a quick caller, and I'm going to get into that. I, I respect that. We got Anthony from Cali. What up, Anthony? They spelled that with a. Oh, how's it going? Hey, what's happening? Uh, oh, not too much. I got a question for Speaker Bass. Uh, I'm a commercial truck driver out here in California, and um, I got an idea on how to relieve some of this horrendous uh, congestion that we have at the DMVs. Every time I go to the DMV, I stand for hours and hours in line waiting, no matter if I have an appointment or not. And uh, uh, as a commercial driver, uh, I'm an owner-operator also, I have to buy my tags either quarterly or every single day or every single month. Now... Uh, I can buy my personal vehicle tags online, but I can't seem to buy my commercial tags online. Now, how would I go about talking to somebody up there in Sacramento to, uh, you know, getting the, to to make it to where I could actually do that, where I could actually register my vehicle online, just like I do my private car? It would save thousands of hours for not, not only me, but there's you know millions of owner operators in the state that have to go through the same process every single day. Well, that's a good I'll question. I'll say drive your th truck right through the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> they damn sure will see you next. <laughs> <laughs> Who next? <laughs> well, you know, oh, oh, I guess it's you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that's, a, a, that's an interesting idea, I, and I would be happy to look into it. And you can call my office at 323-9... Should I say that? No, go ahead. 323-937-4747. Okay, and we will look into that. Why can't you register? I know what I the problem know. is. What's the problem? When they started the budget cuts, the DMV now every three month, th every three Fridays they're off. Right. And and maybe they should be open on Saturdays too. That's why no the more. Is... They open four days a week except one Friday out of the month. 
That's why the lines are. I was just in the DMV, and no disrespect. Rest dirt in your bike. I, I no disrespect. I had to rest in my little situation, and and I felt out of place because everybody there was speaking Spanish except me. <laughs> now I think we should hire uh, a diverse people at the DMV hire because what? I can I can get my gut. No, my, you're not gonna skip past that. Hire what? Diverse, diverse. I say diverse. It's, that's the word. Was that in Sherman Oaks? It was in. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you are you. You're right. <laughs> that's the Bud Light hey, joke of the day, right there. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 why would you? You know, you cut these cats. They go to work. Uh, right. Four days, ten hours a day. That's four why days the week. line. I drove past, and the lines are outside. What, what was you on the one on Kester? The, the one in the valley, the, right, the one, right by that pothole. Yeah, right, right by right by the bathroom that was shut down. But right. you guys right. can <laughs> register online now, which is very easy. But he had a commercial vehicle, so yeah. I don't understand why they can't. I don't either. So I will check into that because who, that who? might be something that we should do. Miss Bass, who was the genius that's passing all of these laws? Well, why just, won't we fire just, him? The well, governor. Yeah. Okay, I don't even like Running Man, so therefore he should be fired <laughs> off of that alone. <laughs> and kindergarten cop right there. Well, you know, should have killed his whole election plan. You didn't like twins? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, un unfortunately, he doesn't think very highly of state workers. And so one of the ways he wanted to solve the budget problem was by cutting back state workers. But then what happens? You have long lines at the DMV I because that's state the workers were. can't do their job. So they don't work on Fridays and they're not on, on Saturdays. They don't work one Friday a month. Wow. One Friday a month. No more Saturdays. One Friday a month. And it's a gang of cats down. I mean, I ain't gonna tell the joke. It's a gang of people down there. Tell the joke. I want to uh, No, it was it was racial. And the post office as well, right? They they're talking about closing the post office. Right, but on... the and, but the post office is federal. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, so that's but, Congress that's looking at that. And also privatizing some parts and of the Bass, how do you say yes to that? Who was saying yes? I don't get it. Well, you know, when it comes to the state workers, I do have to put that responsibility with the governor. But some of those other things I participated in too because we literally did not have any money and had to make some choices. And let me just tell you that when it came to the choices that we made, we, we made those choices with some basic principles. We didn't want our choices to result in people dying. So when we looked at what the state does, we had to look at, well, do you provide dialysis or do you, you know, cut something else? But really, those are the kind of choices that we're faced with because meantime, of the recession. But in the meantime, like you said, we're cutting the children, we're cutting the teachers, and we, we're making bigger classes. So... I know the the, the 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 choices are not life and death, as you, like you say, dialysis and, and, and a different dialysis. Day, dialysis or whatever came with might have been. <laughs> but it's not there's not a life or death situation. But right. we are still suffering. But you know, one Just of because the problems, I ain't dead don't mean I ain't hurting. Right? No, you're absolutely right. And Johnny let me, Mac and is let me a genius. And, le <laughs> <laughs> and let me just tell you that uh, because of a lot of decisions that we made, um, there are a lot of people hurting because of I'm those saying. decisions. There are. But let me tell you that one of the other problems we have in California, California is one of three states where it takes two-thirds votes to pass a budget, which means we have to have Republican votes. And every time it comes to a budget, the Republicans then want to es essentially extort stuff for us for their vote. We should do and they also will never vote for taxes. And see, we need to raise taxes. Let me, let me give you an example. California is the only state where oil is produced, where we don't charge the oil companies a fee to extract oil from the ocean Ooh. or from the land. Now, we could raise a couple of billion dollars right there. Right there. You know what we should do? Take we should call. do, like, I think, like in China. <laughs> take when you don't agree with their law, they get into a full-fledged fist fight. Yeah. <laughs> they get to throwing chairs and beating each other. I think <laughs> that's how we should get down in this country. I have a question. If you if you could raise taxes, what would you raise taxes on? I would raise taxes Marijuana. on the. <laughs> I would I would on the on the stores. I would also raise taxes on the most wealthy. Mm -hmm. I would tax the oil companies for yes. extracting oil. Yes. And then over the years, we've actually given tax breaks, like we're done in the Bush era. So I would reverse the tax breaks. And that Except the film would get us back to where we want to. We yeah, jobs, right. Except the, the film company. Except the film company because <laughs> I've got to shoot. I, 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 I push that one too. Actually, <laughs> thank you those, so those much. Corporate breaks <laughs> <Anything I do. laughs> Speedy, my team. you a best boy don't worry about my life speedy we got another phone call we got my man 10 grand charles from nc what hey what's going North on carolina punk what's going <laughs> on charles uh 
what's going on with you guys? I got an energy, man. That woman got y'all in check today. <laughs> That's what, that's what you do when a lady come in, <laughs> punk. That's how you do. Respect that woman. Respect that yes, woman. Sir. Yes, sir. Door. Yes, well, sir. Look, um, y'all doing a great job, man. But uh, the question, well, now there's three questions. Y'all been up for three long, gave me a chance to think. But uh, I want to know the difference between a de- Democrat and a Republican because how are you just going to tell me I'm a Democrat or whatever? You know, I like to make my own decisions. Number two is she's going to Congress, and I got a solution for the uh, – what is what they call recession? They gave seven hundred and some million dollars to these corporations. Why didn't they just take all the uh, head of household to give every family a million dollars, and they gonna go out and spend it anyway? That's gonna solve that problem there, right? And uh, I forgot the third question was. Uh, Don't worry about it. But, uh, the first two wasn't good. Yeah, the first two right there threw me the right on out of the way. First two was suspect. <laughs> but I like the one he said, give every household a million. He said the head of the household. But but every household a million because they would. I would take. I'd be in the mall. You know me. Yes, yeah, Speedy. I'd you be would. in the mall with my mail. Yeah. But yeah. when that but when that increased crime because now you know saying I'm gonna start. It increased because now you got. I know you got a meal. And I know, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what that's what would happen. So, but, but you got a meal one. too, John. But I, I'm out of blue mind. But I know you got a meal, <laughs> and it's but, because what happens is, as far as crime, I, when people are robbed from the rich, I know you have. But so you've therefore, got two. Th- that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna rob you, get two. Because yeah, you got to put into greed, capitalism. America's built upon capitalism. I'm gonna I'm seize the opportunity. You went to high school where? Don't worry about my life, Speedy. <laughs> don't worry about my life. <laughs> but I, I don't I don't know how you uh, uh, reform. And I, I did like what the young man said about you gave all these corporations all this money. Right. What about you ain't bailed me out of the recession? I'm not right. I'm not talking bad about Barack Obama. I'm no, not no, no, about, no. Let, let me just I'm tell you. Dick Cheney. Well, well, let me just tell you, because, Shotgun. you know, those bailouts started <laughs> under those bailouts started under Bush. And as soon as uh, Obama was elected, I went back to these. Oh, yeah. Okay. His no, first probably. question was. Uh, uh, Democrat, Democrat, and Republic, Republican. How do you know? How do you know? And who said I'm a Democrat? And who said I'm a Republican? How do you know? Well, I think that there's very, very fundamental differences between Finances. Democrats and Republicans. And basically, Democrats believe that one of the roles of government is to protect those who are the most vulnerable in society. And who was that? And well, poor, you know, the unemployed, right? People who are, are disenfranchised. And you know, a lot of the Republicans feel like, hey, that's their problem. Mm. Wow. And that the role of government is to make sure that corporations have the money and the resources they need to, you know, to flourish. And I happen to believe that there's nothing wrong with government helping businesses, but one of government's fundamental jobs should be, you know, how do you live in the richest country on the planet in the history of the world? And you have people that are out on the street, you know, without a place to live. And you have people who live right up the street here who own homes all over the country. Two homes. Three, and two, homes. three, four homes. How is that? How well, can well, we be in this country well, and I, not I, be able to feed everybody? I, I don't think that if if I you know work hard and through the fruit of my labor, I'm I'm allowed to buy certain things or have a multitude or a, a gang of homes or whatever. The case I may agree. Be. I don't think I should punish that individual. No, I agree. I, I, sh- I think we should, as, as a people, as a government, give opportunities that any and every. Which I do love about America, <laughs> but I love about America that anybody today, I could be a skid row bum tomorrow. I could be a king. I right. can reach fame and fortune but we and could succeed do, in anything. But we could do so much more. Yeah. With the resources in our country, the fact that anybody is going hungry, you can go up and down grocery stores and restaurants on the street who will throw food away at the end of the day before they give it to anyone. Our society is not structured but they throwing, to take Are they care throwing away edible food or the food They're that I didn't buy or the food? food. You know, the food that wasn't no good may have been trash. Maybe uh, Paul doesn't eat a whole uh, 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 weed brownies. Maybe she threw half the weed brownies away. I, I have a question. Why, what is the big fear of, of people saying they don't want the government in their, in their lives? What is, that, what is that big fear? Well, from? I think that it is a crazy fear. And let me mm-hmm. just use the example of health care, okay? You have people talking about we don't want the government to run health care. We don't want the government to run. What do you think Medicare is? Government. What do you think Medi-Cal is? Right. It's government-run health care. Mm-hmm. So if we took Medicare mm-hmm. and just expanded who was covered, then you would have, I mean, you know, so people are acting mm-hmm. like the government doesn't run things. You should ask that person, who do you want to run it? You? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I think the government should run it. 
Eight seven seven two one six. And and but but, but it in. shouldn't be the only entity. You that should runs have a governing healthcare. body outside the government. Exactly. Who, same as the police. You should have a governing body outside the police who can police the police. Right. Because the police <laughs> beat a kid, you know, down and say, Well, we did an investigation, we didn't find no fault in it. Right. Hey, the police are investigating police, of course you ain't gonna find no fault. Right. We need a, a some twelve normal constituents of our society, of our, our community, to police. Right. The police. I get into this phone call, but I'm really excited myself. You want to be a congressman? Uh, uh, yeah. You don't want to speak. Can he, I, he said he wanted to come to Washington with me. I'm He'll coming. go to jail in Washington. I'm That's what's going <laughs> I'm going to bypass the background search. Trust me, I'm going to be up in there somehow. My name may be Freddie Jackson. Don't worry about the name tag. I'm going to be up in there, though. I'm going to change my name to this guy, Bishop from the ATL. What up, Bishop? Hey, what's going on? Uh, Are you the dude from Juice? <laughs> no, dog, no, dog, no, no. Too far dead, man. Uh, hey, let me, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, I, I heard her say something about democratic, uh, democratic uh, people, Republican people. I think both of them are crooks. If you really want to be honest, uh, look at what Democratic did uh, under President Clinton. He did the Rockefeller laws. He signed in the NAFTA. How is that helping working people? trading and getting goods from other countries that uh, break the back of our country because the goods they provide in other countries are so low we can't even compete with them. They lay out people. Look at the recession. I mean, all we had in our, in our economy was a uh, housing market. And when the housing market crashed, it was all over. How many times you can buy a property, property and put granite countertops in it and resell it for $7,000? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> got to have granite countertops, Pip. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got granite countertops in my apartment. They ain't mounted, but they didn't. <laughs> I got it in my car. <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Bass? Well, you know, hey, I, hey, thank you for the phone Bishop. Call. I, I, I appreciate that phone call, Bishop. I, I respect that. <laughs> I think that there are lots of things that Democrats have done that are bad, lots of things that Republicans have done uh, that I don't necessarily agree with the votes, but I don't know that I would go so far as to call them crooks. I mean, to me, if you're a crook, you broke the law. Um, and so, you know, hey, I think that our job should be to force the system to work better. That's, and so I, I think a crook uh-huh. is anyone who does anything dishonest, whether you break the law or not. Yeah, that's the difference true, is could, yeah. I, these cats are breaking the law, are bending the law, and not getting caught. Well, does Bishop vote? I'm a uh, go on a go- say <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> No. <laughs> because if he's not a Democrat or Republican, maybe he's Peace and Freedom Party. But, or something but it doesn't like matter. I, I, I agree. With, I agree with some of the things he says. Like you know, saying these, I ain't gonna call them crooks. I'm gonna say they're dishonest. But well, you know what? We're gonna take a take break. A break. Okay. Come back to the dishonesty of the Democrats and the Republicans. Eight seven seven. And we're in the house with Assembly Speaker Karen Bass. Miss Karen Bass, you be right back. Or better known with Johnny Mac as Harris. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey. oh, smooth right there. We here with this Congress, future Congresswoman. I don't want to talk about your old job. I want to talk about your new job. I like that. I like future that. Future Miss Congresswoman Karen Bass. And when you give your speech, when you win, you can have this playing in the background. I'm gonna be. At, I'm gonna be at your speech. I'm gonna be there right with you in D.C. Topless. My nice. whole, I, I'm in great shape, Speedy. You know, for a gecko. I'm, I'm in great shape. She said for a gecko. You see these muscles, Speedy. I'm drinking on my little Bud Light, and I'm feeling good about today's show. We got a chance to talk about some great things and hopefully helpful things to to America, and and Bud Light is helping me understand my situation. That's right, because Bud Light is all about having a good time and bringing Bud Light to the party. Bud Light's unique ability to elevate good times with friends is what makes it the perfect beer. Especially when your friends, if your friends bring the Bud Light lime, I respect my friends that bring the lime. <laughs> well, Bud- All the wheat. I mean, you had to use the bathroom after the wheat, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bud Light is the best-selling American-style light lager because of its superior drinkability that's just, just right. Not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light is refreshing and great tasting. It's fun, social, yes, and the perfect is. beer to enjoy And with according friends. to Speedy, limes are yellow, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> when you want to have a good time, Bud Light's drinkability is what sets Bud Light apart from other light beers. Next time you get together with friends, make sure you bring Bud Light. The yeah, difference is lime. drinkability. And watch Bud out for the potholes. Bud Light lime. I prefer Bud Light lime. I, I really but do. I, 
but it was a joke. I knew a lime is green. Yeah. No, you That's didn't. why you said it was yellow. <laughs> we we had Oprah. Oprah was here one time and speaking, and Speedy said, all the way from the state of Chicago. I'm like, oh, my God. Is that the 53rd state? <laughs> How do we get the state of Chicago? <laughs> Assembly Speaker Bass, um, we've been hearing a lot in the news about the government being broken. Yes. What do, what are people, what do people mean by that, and do you sure. agree with it? I absolutely agree with it. I think the government is broken in California, and let me just give give you a couple of examples. Number one, I mentioned uh, before, one of the reasons why we can never pass a budget on time is because California is one of three states that it takes two-thirds vote to pass a budget. Why? The other states are Rhode Island and Arkansas. You can fit both of those states in Los Angeles County. That's how small they are. Well, okay? why, why does it take two-thirds? Because when we passed Proposition 13, we didn't read the small print. The mm. small print said it takes two-thirds vote to pass a budget always because of Prop 13. The initiative process, which we've also been talking about, three strikes. Three strikes is the reason why the corrections part of the budget is going crazy, and we spend more on corrections than we do for other things. Mm -hmm. The other part uh, is the uh, tax system and term mm -hmm. limits. So you're only allowed to be in the assembly for six years. So as soon as you learn the job, then they throw you out. Wow. And that's part of the design, right? Because right. you can't really get anything done if you're only there for five minutes. But uh, isn't like the part of the government never supposed to be like a lifelong job? You're supposed to like serve two terms, right? Well, and the, then you the, retire and get 80% of your uh, wages for the no, rest. No, 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 no. We get no, we have no pensions, no retirement, nothing. Okay? So no. we, we are there six years and then that's it. What about uh, a congressperson? A though? congressperson can serve for however long. And a but it wasn't designed for that get, though, right? Well, I don't know what it was. Originally, no, there were no term limits. And the problem with term limits on a national level is that all 50 states would have to decide. Because you can't have California having term limits for Congress. Excuse me, 51 states, because Chicago is a state. But keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can't And have, limes are green. You can't have California having term limits and Arizona not, because then California's congressional delegation would be completely uh, at a disadvantage. Oh, okay. So, But in the state legislature, we have term limits. So term limits, the initiative process, um, and then what else was I saying? The initiative process. And two-thirds. Two yeah, two-thirds. Two -thirds. Yeah, I knew that. How, how long? Three reasons why we have a broken government. On, on a personal note, how long have you been studying and reading about our government? Because you are so you know, well, smooth. Well, thank you. But do you know, I, have, I don't know that I, I have never taken a political science class. Mm. Really? Uh -uh. And all them history classes I took. <laughs> I studied medicine. I didn't study politics. Politics is what I did on the side. So I'm self-taught. Wow. You see? Right. So you don't have to have a Ph.D. Right. So why did everything. you choose that instead of the medical field? Well, because I didn't realize I could make a living at this. I thought I had to. Are <laughs> well, you saying you did it for the filthy lucre? <laughs> no, I, I, did it, I did it for free. Yeah. I did it for free because the kind of politics I was involved in, which is trying to free Nelson Mandela, fighting against apartheid, fighting you know against police abuse, you don't get paid to do that. So I did that after work, but, and I studied in the medical field, so I'd be unemployed. We have a, no, I'm sorry, poetess. I was just going to ask, when, what is your biggest political goal? Oh, my biggest political goal is, is really... You know, if I could do something significant around criminal justice, if I could do something significant around foster care, those are my political goals. It's not obtaining an office. And That's just not – because I, I'll tell you, if, if the opportunity to run for caucus did, uh, for Congress didn't present itself, I'd just be in the community doing the same thing I was doing when you met me, Bordas, because mm -hmm. it was long before I ever ran for office. Yeah. Wow. We, we have another phone call. And, and when you get into the uh, criminal justice department, you got to hire me. Okay. I'm cheap. That's only going to cost you $230,000 a year. <laughs> we have a uh, phone call. But no health care. <laughs> no I won't need none. I will not get sick for 230000 a year. I will live in a cocoon if I have to. Uh, you're going to love this name. Germs. <laughs> From Georgia. <laughs> Now, hey, I don't know. Uh, is that germs with a J or a G? <laughs> with a G. Now, I don't know what kind of germ you oh, may be. God, why would you call yourself germs? Hey, germs, hey. welcome to the show. Hey, how about hey, you? Okay? Hey, give I it up for STD. I used to be a rapper back in the day. You know, that was the name. <laughs> you was a rapper. Your name was germs? If you wonder why yeah, you didn't make it. Was you on a bathroom so tour? I germs. <laughs> okay. No, I was just, I was spitting that ill flow. You know, it was contagious. You know, I had a whole oh, concept back then, but I'm grown yeah, now. So yeah. you know, Jones was a rapper, and he was spitting that ill flow, and it was contagious. contagious. So it was an yeah. STD. So, uh, <laughs> Donna Rhea, speak to us. <laughs> Simple, hey, um, go right here. 
first off, Ms. Bass, I want to say it's an honor to speak with you and a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Germ. I was listening to the um, health care you know, summit they were having yesterday in Washington, and it really honestly sounded like to me, I mean, it sounded like, you know, two cliques in a high school, you know, back, I forget the name of the movie, Grease, where they had the Falcons and whoever they were. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just, it. You, you know, shape up. Every, everybody had their talking points, and it's like nobody was really listening to the other side. And, I mean, you know, just me as an American, that kind of hurts because I don't, I tend not to try to think Democratic a Republican. I just think American. And I mean, you know, it just seems like to me, though, that the Republican side is just sitting there like, OK, we're going to vote for this bill unless you really give us something like they're holding votes hostage. And my question was this is twofold. Number one, they kept talking about a thing called re- reconciliation. Right. And I was just wondering what that meant in Congress. And number two, since you are in California and I am a truck driver, you guys have some of the, you know, best carb laws out there. But at the same time, you know, against us, they don't want us to idle our trucks. Carbon. And I'm asking you this, you know, did they forget that there's a human being actually in this truck? Because, I mean, if you're down in San Diego, it's 150 degrees, or you're up in the, you know, the top part of northern California, and it's, you know, 15, 20 degrees up in Sierra Mountain, I mean, what way am I supposed to keep warm up, or, you know, keep myself comfortable at that point? Well, you well, mean uh, drink Bud Light? No, you mean it's a <laughs> no, germ. No, he's driving. Why you're idling? He said well, he's idling. <laughs> they don't want him to idle. Well, you know, what he's, he's pointing out a basic problem, I think, that happens a lot, which is a lot of times we pass laws but don't necessarily realize all of the unintended consequences. And what he's describing sounds like an unintended consequence. But I was listening to the health summit, too, and I kind of had a different take on it because I think the president was really trying to get at the issues. And he kept busting the Republicans for only talking about talking points, you know, for, for just doing rhetoric. Why did they and, invite and for, the Republicans? I don't get it. Well, because... He's been under pressure that it can't just be a Democratic bill, but he mentioned reconciliation. And what reconciliation means is is that, okay, we talked about it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to participate, so we're just going to pass it. Oh, okay. Now, ideally, like Who is saying that, the Republicans or the Democrats? No, well, that, that's what the Democrats, oh, I believe, will ultimately I, do. In other words, I'm we invited that. you to the party. Right. You refuse to play. Right. Refuse so to I'm not going to keep like. inviting you. I, I, I respect that. I'm just going to push it through. Because if, if, by them not showing up, it's just going to keep it. Delayed and postponed. Well, all forever. they say is no. Yeah, that's why they. That's why they're called the party of no. Miss Bass, don't yes. invite them. We well, don't need them. They don't dress <laughs> right. Their hair ain't never together, and they tuxedos never really fit. Anyway, we got another phone call. We got my man Larry from Ohio. A what real, up, Larry? A real name. Larry, are you on the phone with Germs? Larry. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. I'm here. Uh, Hey, right, said, Larry, I mean, for can, can we afford this health care? Because, like, in Ohio, we're being taxed out the yin-yang. I mean, every couple of years, they want more of our money. After a while, it starts interfering with our way of living. So how are we supp- supposed to survive when you keep taxing us out the yin-yang? Well, that is just... my question on the health care bill. Can we continue to survive without it? And there you go. That's exactly what I was going to say. See how smart you Ms. are? Ms. Bass, I'm telling you, you I got my bags packed southwest. You know, I got a free ticket. You know how he got that? Because he mentioned the word yin-yang. You know what that meant. <laughs> I thought it was the yin-yang twins. I was, I was like, I never heard that song. But go well, ahead, Ms. Bass. you know, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, Blue Cross raised their rates 30%. And there was nothing that we could do about it. You have people mm. who can't get insurance because they have a pre-existing condition. Right. The question is, can we not afford mm-hmm. to do health care reform? And I think the way it's done, it will not raise everybody's taxes across the board. Now, if you make three or four hundred thousand dollars, that's another story. You are going to get a little tax. But How about I don't three think or four major- hundred? That's what, <laughs> and I owe you well, a few you thousand. You don't need to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I bet not get sick, Germ. Yo, we're going to have to wrap up. This show was fantastic, I'm not incredible. Leaving. And I appreciate it. I'm I wanna, not leaving. I want to say uh, <laughs> to Miss Bass, Jamie Foxx is going to be here, but he has to be at the Image Awards. So oh, yeah, you know, I was can, supposed to be there too, but I can't go. Th- th- you can go. You can wear that. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going to wear that. Can I come back again? Uh, Miss yeah, Bass, yeah. you have an open invitation. Thank you. Anytime yeah. you want to come back, as long as I get my gig for the two hundred thirty thousand, we can. Uh, I'm gonna go. I can go to Sacramento with you too, and I appreciate your lovely. Is, it, is this a cabinet? I don't know what they call you. Oh yeah, this is my this cabinet. This your cabinet. Your cabinet right here. Mm-hmm. Your, your lovely drawers that you brought with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh drawers. Drawers. Oh, can you, you tell? Drawers. Can you tell our listeners once again how they can support your campaign? Sure, they could go to KarenBass.com. That's the website, and you can sign. 
sign up to be involved, and you can be involved from anywhere around the country yeah. because we accept checks. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're going to maybe do a not campaign, mine. <laughs> how about online credit card? Uh, you don't uh, want to do my credit card. I got, okay, a, I got okay. an EPT well, card. I will certainly <laughs> contribute to your campaign. I got a wick. I got a wick card. <laughs> Yo, you. this is the Foxhole. Oh, Shout out once again, thank Miss Bass for coming through. You've been a, 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 a beautiful bouquet of knowledge that you have gave to the beautiful people. Shout out to everybody listening. And to my man, Jamie Fox. I hope you do a great job at the Image Awards. Speedy, you got something to say? Shout out and uh, uh, Precious, call me. I'll take you to the uh, POTUS. Thing. Hey, tune in next week and all week. On tune the in Fox next week Hole. to the Foxhole, baby. We out here like last year, like Bever did with no underwear. <laughs>